What's up and welcome to Kind of Funny's Ghostbusters in review. Many, many years in the making, but we are finally here. They said it couldn't be done. And I'm very, very excited that we are proving them all wrong. Of course, I am Tim Geddes, joined by the biggest Ghostbusters fan I know, Greg Miller. What's up, everybody? Are you ready for a good time? <laughs> I am. I am. Yeah, we yeah. have the big dog, Kevin Coelho. Hey, guys. Real the quick, natural. Kevin, are you using that new Elgato low-profile mic arm? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm using the high-profile one. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never seen a more dominant mic arm. There, 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 there. Sorry, I just had to. I moved it slightly because I thought the Kevin, mic wasn't don't working. Don't apologize for anything on Ghostbusters Day. Day. All right, Tim. You. Tim kept the low profile one, which I was bummed. I did want the low profile one, but the natural rifle, Andy Cortez. Hello, everybody. Excited to be here. And the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. I was just gonna say, producer slash seducer. Good reference. Good Thank reference. You. It's good. Like that's all I'm doing today. I'm only responding in Ghostbusters references. Good. Good. I appreciate that. that. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Ghostbusters <laughs> references, smart. shout out to Carter Harrell and Cameron Kennedy once again killing the intro game. There, uh, you gotta love the Milk Mommy little ghost logo, I mean, and of course, yeah, I don't like its face. I love it's amazing. It. The, the sexy Slimer at the end. The sexy uh, shout out to Jen. That Fantastic. is one of the best intros, and I know we say that every week, but goddamn, it's amazing. It's so when good. I showed it to Jen, so when she, I showed it to Jen, and it, it, it went by. She's like, "Wait, what was that?" <laughs> I was like, "It's sexy Slimer. It's you immortalized." <laughs> If we can make Sexy Slimer a thing going forward, that would be the thing I'd want to leave on this planet. That's my yep. legacy. That is my legacy. Uh, so this is Kind of Funny's Ghostbusters in review, where leading into Ghostbusters Afterlife, we are going to be watching Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, and Ghostbusters 2016, a.k.a. Answer the Call. A little revisionist history there. They're trying to add a subtitle. Uh, but the plan is, hopefully, it's leading into the new movie, the world's in a weird place. Things might get delayed. Things might sure. change. So we're not really sure. But we're also pre-recording this because Greg Miller about to have a baby. But baby. we can't do Little Ghostbusters in Little review. Baby Egon. Exactly. Without uh, Greg baby. Miller. I yeah. appreciate you already bending your lives to my child's will. That means a lot to me. He's going to be our CEO one day. So <laughs> we got we to gotta gotta get, get start him early. now. <laughs> Uh, but like I said, this is Kind of Funny's Ghostbusters in review. You can watch it on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny or RoosterTeeth.com. If you want it as a podcast, just search your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny in review, and we'll be right there for you. If you want to get the show ad-free and if you want to watch live as we record it, you can go to Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny. We appreciate all of you so much. You can also write in your reviews in haiku form which is a fun little segment of the show that I can't wait to get to. <laughs> a fun little segment. <laughs> uh, today we're talking about ghostbusters with a runtime of one hour and 45 minutes it was released on june 8th 1984 which means how old were you guys june 8th i was four years old i was what one. what year okay. 1984 84. oh okay yeah so so you guys did not see this in theaters correct um i probably did see this in theaters actually that's, that's awesome crazy that's yeah. so crazy. I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure. I have to call my parents, but my mom would probably just whatever top of her head comes off, yes or no. But uh -huh. I'm pretty sure. You I want saw me to call your mom? No, no, thank you. That'd be okay. Yeah. One, 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 one was good. One was Greg good. calling Nick's mom. Hey, uh, <laughs> did, did Nick see Long time Ghostbusters? No talk. <laughs> it's a Scarpino. Uh, it was released June eighth, nineteen eighty four. Directed by Ivan Reitman. Notable films he's directed include Meatballs in nineteen seventy nine, Stripes, Ghostbusters, Love Ghostbusters two, Twins. Kindergarten Cop, you gotta yeah. love it, gotta love it. Animal House, Beethoven, Space Jam, and Private Parts were movies that he was a producer on. So this guy, he does some cool shit. Uh, his son, Jason Reitman, is also a film director known for Juno, Thank You for Smoking, and Up in the Air, for which he won a Golden Globe. And oh he will be directing the upcoming for Ghostbusters movies. Afterlife. So You'll also be seeing him next week in Ghostbusters too. Oh, this whole animal. this whole time I have a confession to make. Go, go go for it, Andy. Here we fucking go. This whole time, I thought that Ivan Reitman was Harold Ramis. I did too. I did Me too. too. Me well, too. not this whole time. Are I, like, you? I, figured, I thought yeah. he was like, hey, I'm in the movie. I'm Egon, and also I'm the actor. Like I don't. No. You're, you, it's understandable why you have, we, you'd be confused by that because Harold Graham is also a very good director who directed Groundhog's Day. Groundhog's Day. Uh, and he Caddy passed Shad. away, right? Yes. Harold Graham did pass away, unfortunately. Um, I'm right, Ramis still alive. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I'm right, Ramis still alive. Yeah. Yeah. Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis wrote Ghostbusters. Yes. 
Oh I'm, I'm, no! I know. That's, I know you know that, Nick. No, I'm explaining this to Andy. <laughs> of why it. you would think Harold Ramis was maybe directing this or got it. It's a little way. confusing because he was, wrote it. Yeah, there was, and yes. they and they and that crew worked together a lot. Like, got it. Homies okay, back okay. From from SNL. Wow, we're learning stuff today yeah. here on Interview, everybody. Oh, uh, I, I'm loaded with I'm like, loaded comment, tip, subscribe. Uh, real quick, Paul's about to get a call. So let me. Can I give my two thoughts on the movie or like yeah, go for my opinion? Um, I I enjoyed it, and there's like. Rewatching it as an adult because I think this is the first time I've ever sat down and like rewatched, like actually focused on it. Sure. Uh, a lot of interesting things came out, like the lore stuff. I'm actually really excited about, it, and it's really cool that Afterlife seems like it's gonna like dive deeper into that. Um, definitely, all the things that scared me as, as a child make total sense. Like all of them are still weird. Yeah, yeah, it's really weird. Like I don't like I don't think that Keymaster and Gatekeeper needed to do stuff. Yeah, like, to, oh, like I think oh, they just yeah, had yeah. to sit there as as dogs to open up the the thing. No, but, they had so, to, the key master that turned them back into dogs. That's how dogs are made. <laughs> <laughs> and they call it doggy style for a reason, right? They do it. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, it's I don't know. It was more enjoyable. the The biggest thing for me is like, man, it's watching this movie reminds me so much of movies from that era that like I haven't seen in so long. Where it's like. The old cars, everyone's smoking. It's so weird to, to see the throwback. How many to... fucking times does Dan Aykroyd have a cigarette hanging out of his mouth? It looks incredible. cool every it's, time. It's, it's like cool Marvel 100. Time. It's like this long. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, very cool revisiting this as an adult. Definitely different. Still still creepy. And a lot of the like my childhood fears kind of came back. And, uh, and I know you're trying to get it all out. In. When we do plot, please point out the things that scared you as we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. The, definitely. Everything. And then Gozer, like, it, even as like an adult, it's like I don't, I don't know, if, like I want to, I want to spend some time with this god thing, yeah, travel you from know. a, you know what I mean? Like I'm That's confused the about, about the feelings that I have. You don't know. You don't. Yeah. You never know what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why they say who you get a call. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, I'll start saying, you, were you scared of Ghostbusters as a child oh, yeah. watching it? I wasn't. Yeah, I was actually. I mean, the the I'll I'll never forget when I was a kid watching the first scene with the ghosts and like and them going down there and creeping around. There was a level of fear. Um, this was a, this was a, and that's why I think this this movie's so good. Is this not played for laughs? This is actually kind of a scary movie that's made, and it just happens to feature these comedic actors and there are these comedic beats and they, because of their performances, it mellows it out. But yeah, the do- like I was terrified of the part where like the scariest part of the movie for me is when Lewis Tully's banging on the glass and he's like, "How do I get into this thing?" Green. And he yeah. turns around and the- and then everyone looks and it goes right back to their dinner. When I was a kid, I was like, "Why aren't they fucking helping him? Class- what is Those wrong with these Red people is. in New York?" Class- it's Rick Moranis. Moranis. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, there was there's a lot of stuff like the the librarian go- the library ghost was uh, sure. that was scary to me, and the dogs were super scary to me all the time. Ghosts are not so much. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there was a, like the, the thing that also freaked me out was the, I think he, he's making a cameo on the new one. Cause I think he's in the trailer, which is the, the, the cabbie, the skeleton cabbie. Oh yeah. That the minor in the new afterlife trailer is inspired by the cabbie, but no, okay. it's not the same from cabbie. what we know from, uh, Jason Reitman's, uh, comments here and there. Yeah. See, that's, what's interesting about it is like, so for me, you know, and I'm sorry, Tim, to derail here. I don't know if you, I don't know how you want to do the show. Are you just talking I, about scary stuff or yeah. Ghostbusters and I think being scared of it as a kid. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm just, for me, go for it. For me, it was the idea that, yeah, I didn't see Ghostbusters in theater because I was too young, but it, I saw it on HBO. And I remember my parents identified early on that I was like not into ghosts because what does that mean for like, what I would have been? I, I must have seen Ghostbusters in 80. I'm, I would I would say I was three. I would have probably said I was three maybe at first, if that makes sense. I saw it right around when the second one was coming out, right? I don't. That doesn't sound right because I remember being such a Ghostbusters fan leading up leading to the second it. one. Okay. Like, you know yeah, I mean? but like, imagine, I imagine one year of your life at that point feels like an eternity. Sure, that's a great point too. Know? That's a great point too. I would say that you know whatever it was to get it on HBO, I remember it was a big deal, and I remember my parents having identified in me enough that I I was interested in ghosts or scared of ghosts or whatever. I had something going on that I had showed expressed an interest in ghosts at some point. You ain't scared of no ghost. I well then I probably would have been, but I remember them being like we want they kept me up for this movie i remember it was a big deal and they were like we think you're gonna like it and it might seem scary but it's not and like they were big uh snl fans they were big bill murray fans mm-hmm. and harold ramus fans and stuff like that and so i had the expectation set up early on that 
this was an empowering movie, I think, of these guys actually can stop the ghosts. Like, the ghosts aren't going to escape. And even, you know, like, our first introduction to Slimer, right? Like, when he's barely... I, I can't imagine watching Ghostbusters, right, and not knowing Ghostbusters. So to watch that at, in a theater, and, like, that, there is that moment of, like, Pete, Pete, and, like, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun of, you know, Ray Stance oh, running to get to Venkman, awesome. just to find ah. him that he slimed me. Like, that's yeah. all this thing can do to me, right? Like, it can go through me and slime me. Like, I remember the Ghostbusters never scared me it always made me feel more power not powerful that sounds weird but like having the, the the real ghostbusters sign up in my the poster up in my room that said this room's protected by the real ghostbusters like made me feel protected from ghosts the oh, cool. putting on the suit and even the fake proton pack as a kid made me feel protected in a way or at least interested in a way that if something like that had happened i wouldn't be scared of it very cool yeah but i love that's what i love about the movies of that, that era right we talk about this a lot though they like they would not make a movie like this. I mean, this wasn't really a kid's movie. This no, wasn't a movie. That's why that Ghostbusters 2 is right. not people's favorite Ghostbusters because it is a kid's movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's so interesting to watch is like the reason I think that everyone loves this and, the, and I think we could take lessons from this still even with modern films that make today is that kids loved this because of the ghosts and the proton packs and all that stuff. But parents loved it because it was an adult movie. It was a movie yeah, with funny. starring some of the greatest comedic minds of the day. I mean, freaking Bill Murray doesn't get much bigger than Bill Murray in the 80s. Um, and that's, and you, so you go back and watch this and, and it's, it's, it's interesting to watch it as an adult. Cause you do pick up on all of the innuendos. You pick up on all the, sure. just the subtle performances of it all. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's great. Uh, so going back to the director, Ivan Reitman, he was a cameo in this movie as well as the demonic voice of Zool. Mm. That's kind of interesting. Cool. There is no Dana. There's only Zool. Only Zool. Exactly. Exactly. A uh, budget of thirty million dollars. When I was a kid, <laughs> there is it is no pretty Dana, scary. Only Zool. Yeah. Oh my God! Get out what of there! What a lovely Zool. singing voice you must have. Zool. <laughs> uh, budget of thirty million dollars and a box office of two hundred ninety-five million. It was number one film in theaters for seven consecutive weeks. It was one of only four films to gross more than a hundred million that year. Uh, it was the highest grossing comedy of all time until Home Alone came along in nineteen ninety. Uh, in 2015, the Library of Congress selected it for preservation in the Nat National Film Registry, and the theme song Ghostbusters by Ray Parker Jr. was a number one hit for many, many weeks. Uh, some fun stats for you, Andy. Uh, the four actors playing the Ghostbusters were all at least six feet tall. Uh, William Atherton, the villain guy, uh, was also six feet tall, which made Rick Moranis the odd man out uh, in the principal male cast at five feet four inches. So good. I yeah, like, was shocked Tiny by man. That. I gotta tell you one thing right up. now. Like, it's fucked I'm, up. You know what I mean? Get I'm, out here with the Tully agenda. The the performances of this movie across the border, right? I mean, the fact that they got Sigourney Weaver is ridiculous. But Rick Moranis steals the show every single time he's on screen. Bar none. I don't know if I'm wrong about that, Greg. No, he's my favorite part of the movie for oh, sure. No, I mean, Rick Moranis is I fucking incredibly it. talented. He, he, he delivers a performance. Do we know who he was supposed to be originally? Who was going to play that part? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, John Candy turned down the role of Whoa. Louis Tully. Uh, because his ideas for the character were rejected. According to Ivan Reitman in the DVD commentary that Greg's never heard before, I'm sure. Uh, among Candy's suggestions, he wanted the character to have a German accent and have a pair of schnauzer dogs. Uh, no one felt the German accent was appropriate for the character, and since there was dog imagery in the movie mm -hmm. with the terror dogs, they felt having Tully have his own dogs was too much. But Julia was, Roberts and also was like, auditioned for, for the role of Dana. Oh, oh sure. I, I yelled over. Well. Who did it? Who did it? I'm sorry. Julia, Julia Roberts. Roberts. Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, obviously Rick Grandis is just was an inspired choice, and I think for the same reason, right? Because he has such a small stature, he's such a different voice, uh, you know, opposite of when he had when he shares scenes with with Harold Ramis and uh, and Dan Aykroyd. I think he only has like one scene with with Bill Murray in this whole movie, which I think is the thing. He's like, somebody get that little guy. Um, but no, well, there's the the thing where he passes him in the hallway. But that the, honest, I'm thinking of a deleted scene more mm -hmm. where he actually talks to Lewis. But I'll be quiet. All right, but even then, it's like that's great too, right? That you just got such a—he's such a timid little guy with his high waters, and he's wearing like the the turtleneck and all that stuff. I just love that when he—the scene when he walks in and he's allowed to shine when he walks into his party and he's talking to all his guests. He's like, "This is—I sure. so, get the generic version. It's a much better idea." And, and it's like one continuous shot mm -hmm. that shows you exactly how talented and how great Rick Moranis was back. Entirely improv. That's scene. fucking bonkers to me. There's no way he did that off the dome. Uh, the, the fact that I got here is when Lewis Tully mingles with his party guests, commenting on the price of the salmon and so on, the scene's one continuous shot and almost entirely improvised. It's, uh, almost none of the scenes were filmed as scripted. Most had at least one ad lib. Most of Bill Murray's lines are ad libs. Well, the cool thing, yeah, if you go back and watch, like, is specifically the, the part where he comes out of the door and he's like, we came, we saw, we kicked their ass. There's like five or six other takes of that of him just saying crazy shit. And they're like, that was the one that worked. 
Yeah, I like that one. Uh, the Bechtel test is a measurement of representation of women in fiction, asking whether a work features at least two women who talk to each other about something other than a man. This movie passes. Once again, barely. barely. Uh, there is one scene with Dana and Janine where Dana says, excuse me, this is the Ghostbusters office. And she says, yes, it is. Can I help you? I don't have an appointment, but I'd like to speak to someone. Yeah, so with that, yes. it passes. <laughs> And again, you want to um, talk about also utility players here. Annie Potts fucking coming in. Oh, just my God. perfect in this movie. I like her. Yeah. Enough for this shit. <laughs> Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. what do you want? So good. Yeah, loved her. Uh, yeah, now just talking about our, our thoughts on the movie. I This is the second time I've ever seen it. I watched it for the first time in like 2014 or something, back when we first started the Game Over Greggy show. And I was kind of like, I don't really understand it. I don't know why you guys love it as much as you do. And now being like a little bit older and like a little more uh, – kind of knowledgeable about like movies of, of that decade and like having seen a lot of my uh kind of having filled a lot of the holes in my uh movie knowledge of the 80s stuff like this one definitely does stand out in a positive way and i i think that it is something really special where at the end of the day i love that it kind of defies genre and, and like you can't really put it down as a comedy or a horror or a sci-fi movie it's kind of like a mix of all those things whenever it wants to be mm. but it's so cool that it kind of like the fact that this movie isn't based in a previous IP, it's just its new own thing. And there's this whole world with all these characters. It's about getting the team together. And it's just a satisfying story with a lot of like fun moments. And I think it's just very well written. Like obviously the improv stuff is where most of the comedy comes from. But I think just from a plot beat by beat perspective, like the movie just works. And it, there's so many elements they throw at you that shouldn't necessarily work together. But it was directed so well that mm-hmm. by the end of it, you're kind of just like, Wow, I I like the 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 people here. I like this world we're in. And, and one fact that I I read that I think it kind of is a testament to why this movie works is Reitman wanted a grounded, realistic score and did not want the music to tell the audience when something was funny. And I think that that is such a a good example of like this movie made choices to not be overtly a comedy and to not go fall into the tropes of subtle, being subtle. overtly a horror yeah. or overtly this or whatever. So when those elements happen they kind of feel unique and this movie just feels extremely unique. And I think that it, it succeeds uh, very much at what it's trying to do. Obviously a lot of things don't necessarily hold up and I don't think it's the funniest movie ever. And it's like, there's certain elements where I'm like, I don't know why it's as revered as it is at the end of the day. Like it's good. I don't think that it is amazing. Um, and when people talk about the the comedy of it, like it being one of the best comedies, I don't see that, but that's okay. Cause I don't think it necessarily was trying to be the best comedy in the world. I think it's entertaining. And I think the the merits of the movie are everything you just said. I think structurally is where it starts to is it really holds up, right? It's a very well structured movie. The beats all hit. Uh, when we get to the end when they're facing off against Gozer, you understand it, it is a really creative and good reason why the ghosts are all over the place and why the, these people's businesses would be um coming to fruition. But at the end of the day, like structurally, they always talk about like what is this movie? What the end like Reitman was like, we figured it out early on. This is a movie about a bunch of guys going into business and starting a business. And and that is what this is. It's like, you know, you get the montage of business is booming, and then all of a sudden it, it goes to crap toward the end, and they get arrested and all that stuff. Um, to me, like, when I, I do think of this as a comedy only because just the subtlety of the performances rings with me. It, it, it hits with me. There's all, one of the, I mean, everything Bill Murray does, there's two moments that stand out. One is when he's like, he's using a little squeezer thing and he opens up the fridge and she's like, he's like, well, I don't, I don't see anything there. She's like, are you sure you're using that right? And he goes, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think so. so. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like all of those little moments that he was allowed to do and they gave him that space to do hit me. And then I think one of my, all, the thing that actually makes me laugh out loud is when they, the first time they test the proton packs in the hallway. Sure. And they fucking light it up and they light up that poor like maid. housekeeper, the maid, and you just hear her go, What the hell the are, hell you, are doing? you doing? And they're like, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. That part, those those little like pregnant pause beats to me are what this movie's all about. And yeah, it's not I like can... oh sorry. Go ahead, Greg. No, no go, please, go please, for please. It. Uh, you trust me. Go ahead. Yeah, it's not I mean, it's not like it's not wedding crashers, right? It's not in your face, let's beat you over the head with the most crude comedy ever. It's just very subtle and it's just a very, very entertaining movie. Um, that that's why I love it. It's Andy a, Cortez. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, Andy hasn't talked yet. Um, I you know I don't know. I guess you just kind of had to be there because I'm kind of with Tim where I just just didn't feel it. I just thought it was I don't know. I expected a bit more. Just kidding, Greg. I thought it was fucking great. Yeah, damn. This goes down as like one of the best old movies that we've seen up there with easy. 
Yeah, uh, like I again, a lot of these movies, I just have so many gaps in my movie knowledge because I was too young and I've definitely seen Ghostbusters one and two, but before the age of five. Like I don't remember shit about them. I have small little vivid memories of Stay Puffed and uh, wow. the little creepy dude in part two. And fuck it, like what, like all I have all these little <laughs> tiny things that I know from, and of course we always talk oh, about right. our Family Guy pop culture knowledge, where oh, all that stuff that gets referenced are just things that I kind of am aware of. But um, goddamn, man, I'm not surprised that I loved Bill Murray so much in Space Jam because I loved him here, and I thought I agree with Tim that I I thought the comedy was great. I don't think it's like the funniest thing ever, but I don't think it necessarily needed to be. I think every line that Bill Murray had and a lot of the smaller interactions just stick out so well and still hold up uh, in terms of that being a clever line, the timing there being great, stuff that would still work in today's world of, you know, comedic movies or whatever. Oh, um, I think this movie could be like a Wes Anderson movie, right? Like that's that's kind of what I think about this, like in terms of that where it's just stylized and they're going for a, di- a specific tone and they nail it. They nail it. Yeah, um, I th- I think it's fantastic. Again, this goes down as one of my favorite classy classic movies that we've seen uh, up there with like Terminator and Karate Kid and all that stuff. This was a, an absolute blast, and I'm glad that I can watch it again as a fully formed adult, somewhat fully formed. I still got time to grow, apparently. No, you know you don't. It's okay. you can hit six feet, baby. Movie fucking sucks, actually. <laughs> Greg Miller. What you think about Ghostbusters? I that's I think just the silliest question you could ask, right? Like I don't I don't even that's not what I want to do on in review. Obviously, I love Ghostbusters and it means so much to me. And there's a million different ways to take it, but I what I, I want to double down on or double into is what you were talking about earlier, where you're talking about it like having this. It's entertaining, is what Nick's saying. You're saying it's not a comedy like something you'd expect modern, obviously, and, and even Andy of like you had to be there kind of thing. I think there's a lot of truth in there, and I think it's one of the reasons. Again, I no by no means am I a a, uh, a history of film person. I am a Ghostbusters person, but I think to take a step back from that, even like I said with my parents, like I am a Bill Murray person. I am an Ivan Reitman person, and so I think to try to contextualize why Ghostbusters blows up the way it does is a couple different things. Is I think number one, it is this the style of the comedy at the times taking a step towards what comedies will become or whatever, or what movies become, right? Because it is this merging of comedy and uh, special effects in a way you weren't seeing. And what I mean by that is to take a step back and look at some of the other movies we've already talked about, both for Ivan Reitman, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, right? Of like, <clears throat> I grew up loving Stripes. I grew up loving the Blues Brothers. I grew up loving Animal House. And for me to go back even as an adult, like in college, right, when I'd go back and watch those, those were tough movies to show people that didn't grow up that way. Because all three of those movies, I think, just kind of keep going. They are all these people who are comedic improv actors or friends out there doing these things. There's a plot, sure, that's loose to it, but then it's just another scene, another scene, another scene. You're kind of going like, where are we going with this? Like, Blues Brothers is like... If you are from the Chicagoland area, Blues Brothers is the Bible. It is one of the most revered movies possible, right? But you watch Blues Brothers and you're like, it's still going, huh? All right. They're still on this quest from God that isn't even like – doesn't even start as the real thing. It just becomes that way. Nick? Yeah. I mean to second that, right? Like I I respect all these movies. But coming from like Tim and Andy's perspective, I watched Animal House and I watched Blues Brothers because those are the movies that people from like – that were older than me were like, oh, you got to check these out. These are the funniest, most clever, best movies ever. And I still don't vibe with either of those movies. Yeah, I've watched Animal House three times. I'm like, I don't get it. It's just a bunch of collection of scenes of admittedly talented people. But the plot is – the plot's secondary to letting Jim Belushi, you know, be a zit in, in the cafeteria and start a food fight. So, sorry, Greg, back to your point. But that's that, – those no, are my perspectives exactly. as well so, like, as I share that. Ghostbusters gets to this really – it's this really interesting, uh, like, fulcrum, right, where everything – I feel, again, not being by any stretch of the imagination as a film expert, but feels you see it turn the up corner – where Ghostbusters is a story, it is sh- condensed in a, a huge shout out to Ivan Reitman and Harold Ramis oh, reigning in Dan Aykroyd's crazy ass story of like how Ghostbusters was supposed to start when the Ghostbusters had already been around for years and they were kind of over it and yada, yada, yada. Like they're like, no, this needs to be an origin story. It needs to be this. It needs to be that. Uh, and they cut so much from this movie. But it's this thing where the comedians are doing the comedic performances you want 
but also then trying to tell you a story somewhere to it. I know there's a whole undercurrent of people who say there is no story to Ghostbusters. There is no real plot to it because there is this whole, like, I forget who it was, but there's this infamous years ago now on the internet story that went around of somebody in a college class or the teacher was talking. He's like, and that's why every movie has this hero's journey and and there's always plot, except for Ghostbusters. And everybody in the class is like, what do you mean? Ghostbusters is great. He's like, no, Ghostbusters is a really funny movie, but like, what the point of these movies is to learn and overcome and do these things. Yeah, he's like, they don't is Pete Venkman a, a, a very different person at the end of Ghostbusters? Nope. Like, no what has he done? No, he's, there's no character development. He's the same no. person. We get to see this thing that happens in their lives, but it's not like this whole thing. Tim, your hand was up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, well, I just, uh, something you're saying uh, reminded me of a point I wanted to make where I think what makes this movie kind of work so well is like we're talking about it's kind of this unique vision and different, but it is this idea of a big budget comedy. Like yeah. that, that is such a, a, a rarity. And at, at this point, it's the most common thing ever. That's what MCU movies are, right? Like that's the, the melding of like the humor being injected into like big plot driven, like action set pieces and all that stuff. And like with Ghostbusters, it's so cool to look back at like 84 and the idea that this movie, if you call it a comedy, it's like there is so many elements, so much like uh, – freaking bleeding edge vfx and and not just vfx but like special effects all that and it's like that is cool and i think that's what makes it work is that they treated that stuff seriously like yeah. they treated it like it that stuff was mattered that was the point of watching the movie and the comedy was kind of just a cherry on top and that cherry on top just happened to be bill murray so it's right. like and rick moranis and like these this incredible cast so it's like it it's lightning in a bottle that they just kind of struck with this and on top of that having branding that is just killer and a theme song i and mean so, it, kind of, it, it kind of you reminds me of the modern superhero movie yeah, of totally. you know melding that. this summer blockbuster with cool action and great special effects and sci-fi and it's it's all this other stuff but it's also very easy to uh, digest because it is a comedy and it, it is these characters that all have their own sort of quirks and they all have their own sort of personalities and uh again all the little back and forth between all of them i just absolutely adored and, and so, like, what you, what's interesting here is you figure that out. Because even if you were to look at something, I want to say, like, Blues Brothers, or you want to look at something uh, like Stripe, and, eh, not Stripe so much, but Animal House for sure, right? You have those big moments that are in those movies that are practical effects, right? Blues Brothers, of course, they drive through a mall. They're, they they yeah. had the record at the time for the most amount of cars smashed during the thing, right? That was what they did. And so that's what your eye got drawn to. Your eye gets drawn to Carrie Fisher with the M4, just like mowing, you know, shooting all the stuff down while the Blues Brothers are in the mud covered down. Ghostbusters has all this crazy special effects and the backpack and the stuff. And then it's melded with the comedy of the time, which is a more understated comedy. That isn't what it is. And it does rely on watching them and listening to their performances and the little things in a way that I don't, I mean, definitely movies today don't do it. And I couldn't tell you when they lost doing it, but it's so crazy. One of the most important things I ever heard right around in, in, too. Yeah, in, <laughs> in school was uh, high school was from uh, my history teacher, Mr. Harper, who uh, one day revealed he was a big Ghostbusters fan too. And one of the things he said was, you know, I've watched it so many times that now I'll go through and I'll just watch actors. I'll just mm -hmm. watch Bill Murray for a run. Mm -hmm. I'll just watch Love that. It. And when he said that, I started doing that. And to this day, I still find acting in the moment that isn't, and I'm not saying this is like cinema's dumb or something now, it's probably better for it, but acting in the moment that isn't beating you over the head with it. Where it is a comment where, you know, Ray says, don't worry, we do this all the time to the hotel manager, right? And Bill Murray double takes. You know what I mean? And there's the one there's my one of my favorite scenes is obviously one that you wouldn't bring up in a movie that I think is filled with great scenes. But it's when the Ghostbusters have just met or and they're not even the Ghostbusters yet. Right. Our trio of uh, professors, uh, you know, scientists come back from the New York Public Library high on that and they walk in and all their shits being wheeled out. Right. And there is this great scene from Bill Murray talking to Dean Yeager, you know, uh, Pete Venkman talking to Bill Murray or uh, Pete Venkman talking to Dean Yeager. And it, it, I trust you're moving us to better places better. on campus. No, yeah. you're being moved off campus. Pfft, that's preposterous. I demand to know why. And Dean Yeager lays it all out, like just in such a cutting out of it. And he's yeah. like, you know, your theories are the worst kind of popular trite. You are a poor scientist, Dr. Bankman. And Bill Murray just goes, I see. Like, and it's like such a <laughs> flat read of like, fuck, he's got my number. Yeah, <laughs> like, I have yeah. no response to this. But it's not, it's not like this bigger moment. It's not a punch in. It's not, you're right. You know what I mean? Like, it's that thing. And so mm -hmm. I think that's where, the, sh the movie shines through and becomes so much more. Even when, like, you know, uh, Walter Peck is talking to uh, uh, Venkman for the first time in his office, right? And he's walking around asking all the questions. And you see Janine lean over her desk and just watch. 
Like, and it, again, it's not something that's played for, let's punch in, let's do this. It's no. it's a thing that's happening in the background. And I'm not saying this makes it a better movie than something. I'm just saying, like, there's all these awesome, funny things yeah. that are happening, but not necessarily being shoved in your face. Like, hey, this is a comedy. It's what's happening. And one example of that that I really appreciated was when they the the bad guys are, like, trying to get them to release the ghost or whatever. And they're sure. just like, do it, do it, do it. And they're, like, all really close together, like a bunch of people in one room. And Rick Moranis is with them. And, like, yeah. this is when he was already kind of, like, possessed <laughs> and taken over. Yeah. And if you just look at him in the back, Background. like, he's like it's, it's a little mimicking. more exaggerated than like just the subtle yeah. thing but like he just commits so hard to just yeah. constantly doing something funny that's yeah, not that's distracting funny. from the dialogue going on right. that other characters have like he's not the focus and th- you're exactly right greg it's like those moments that make this movie more special than how a, another comedy yeah, right. would, would shoot that like that there's, one- the, there's the moment in the in the in the uh elevator right where he's like it just occurred to me we've never had a successful test of this stuff and oh yeah like, why should we worry each of us are wearing an unlicensed, unlicensed nuclear accelerator on our back right he goes well why worry now Switch power me, me up and he switches it on and it's that amazing sound the first time you hear it <laughs> and harold ram is just subtly starts moving over to the left away from me he's like ah yeah. <laughs> it's, that's it it just cuts there's no need for another line there's like no to, need for more dialogue that's just it into like uh, being a product of its time stuff right and like maybe this is just performances and stuff but like i think it does cut back the other way where it, it can be a bit if you watch other people like, i get taken out of it where it's there's like a couple moments obviously Dan Aykroyd. i love dan Aykroyd. yeah i God adore dan Aykroyd. thank you for making go special do all that stuff right but like when he runs out of the library and does the like, uh, and like yeah. runs like that, when he comes down the pole and does, and the, does uh, the skip, so I think yeah. it's like, oh, all right. I, 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 it's so like one of the inspirations for Ghostbusters, right, is Abbott and Costello meet the Wolfman. Like he, he that, that that whole stuff of Abbott and Costello meets Dracula, all like these cro- comedy crossovers, right? Are uh, you can see Dan wrote this thinking of that, and I can see at certain points he's like, oh, he's trying to be like Abbott and Costello here. I'm like, that Not doesn't really fit your world right now in terms of what you're doing. But again, in the it, these are always for the most part played in wide, so it's not like you're getting it beaten over your head. Yes, yeah, sir, Nick. And, the, and it's funny too because we talk about the subtlety of this, right? This could have easily gone the other way because originally they wanted Belushi for this character, right? They wanted Belushi and Murphy. Uh, so it's supposed to be Dan Aykroyd, Belushi, and Murphy, and I think Dan Aykroyd and Belushi would have taken it more toward. Uh, uh, a blues brothers with over the top comedy? zany with physical comedy yeah eddie murphy i think at the time eddie murphy would have probably matched their energy and so it's just some weird stars align that those those two people obviously jim belushi of course couldn't couldn't be in john, pa- john belushi excuse me john Sorry. belushi passed away um and then eddie of course had gone on to other other things i think he was doing like beverly Hills cop or something else this time um but so when you put these characters on screen together and then having this sort of the audience member, which is Ernie Hudson coming in so they can explain sort of some of the more complex ideas to you. It just, it just, it just works. The chemistry is just there. Andy, are you ready? All right, this one's a little bit longer, everybody. So prepare, ready? He's gonna be your dad when that baby comes loose. What is his name? Greg Miller. He's gonna say the plot. He'll drink recap juice. What is his name? Greg Miller. We're gonna let Tim host. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ghostbusters 1984. I nailed it, I nailed it right, Andy? I did yeah, it. That's it. You got it. That was fantastic. Great it. Job, Good round of applause everybody. for Andy Cortez, everybody. <laughs> you kidding me right here? Uh, we start, of course, with the gorgeous Columbia Pictures logo. Somebody you know who watched this movie a lot <laughs> as a kid, right? Like That is such an ingrained image of me. Of the in the soundtrack of course, wow, wow. from this, yeah. you know, right Elmer there. Bernstein. One of the coolest things I ever did uh, in terms of Ghostbuster fandom uh, of just being able to consume it was go to uh, see the SF Symphony play the soundtrack while Ghostbusters played. Cool. So the Ghostbusters cool. played and they played live the thing, and it's just so fucking good. Uh, but now, of course, th- this sorry. part I want to say real quick, and this is like such a Tim thing to say. Stop, but you know how you stop me anytime you want on this one. Obviously, I could go forever. Uh, what Andy was saying earlier about like the Family Guy pop culture stuff, where it's like you know we we kind of know stuff even if we weren't part of it because sure. pop culture is referenced it so much the ghostbusters theme song obviously is as iconic as you can get i've heard it a bazillion times in my life i've not heard this version that many times it must be like the ghostbusters 2 or something there's like another version that sounds more full and so this one just kind of like comes off as like a little not as like impactful for me where it hit i'm like huh 
Mm. The Ray Parker Jr. Hits. one or this song in the beginning? The bass the, hits weren't there, Tim. I kind of feel it. I yeah, feel it. It, doesn't, it doesn't start with the Ghostbusters theme, right? It starts with okay, that I, like, weird. I'm talking about the Ghostbusters theme. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, that's, we don't get that here. Yeah, this we, is, you'll this get is, it when the title card happens. Yes, that, that's what I was referring to. But sure. I just I okay. thought it was kind of weird. I was like, oh man, it's just, it's not hit. They don't know right. what they had yet. They didn't know what they had. You know what I mean? Like you don't. I don't. There's no way to know that. They knew from screeners it was big, but how do you like? restructure your movie around that greg you know? i'll tell you where the ghostbusters theme hits real hard in sure. the ghostbusters party mode we did it's real hard to watch youtube.com slash kind of funny games what a great party <laughs> mode. you know what i mean uh so we're at the new york public library everybody coming in on those big stone statue lions out front of course so iconic to me i freaking nerded out back in the day to go there in my full ghostbuster outfit for ign such a great time and we get alice the librarian going through doing her business in the big old reading room going through and then she goes down into the archives though and starts moving around and she goes down some of the stacks some books start going behind her eventually she keeps going and she's she you know she's like something sounds weird something feels weird around here that's weird uh and then uh she she goes by the library cards and they start shooting out or the you know the dewey decimal system thank god that thing's dead clear shooting out. yeah nick i'll buy anyone a starbucks if you can tell me what other movie this woman was in that is a i know movie. i think i know andy cortez is she laces out laces dan? out dan knew it is out wow knew it. she is Ace yeah, Ventura. Yeah, 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 yeah. also just want to say real quick like this is why i love this movie right this perfectly sets the tone it's scary this is not they were having it's the happy go lucky zany have fun which is i'm so glad they never didn't start with the theme they start with very ominous music and a shot of the lion with birds leaving it it's a it's, it's an upshot it's creepy all the imagery here all the way this is shot it's it totally played straight totally played for the horror aspects of this movie uh so the cars go out go and that's when she's like shit this is fucking popping off i gotta get out of here uh she takes off running gets confused in the stacks <laughs> i mean it's in the moment she doesn't know what's going on she's, ah, ah. and eventually rounds the corner we get the we don't see the ghost we see the light the fan the purple light, light and that's where she screams and that's when we fade into the ghostbusters logo uh, broken crazy, in half which always drove scared me, fucking me crazy this scared, this scared you? Oh, the, just oh, yeah. the, just the late the library, just the librarian Alice getting scared scared you. It set a weird tone. Again, I was young though, you know, yeah. real young. No, I understand. No, I hear you. Don't worry, I can understand all that. It's Kevin. It's kind of like going to haunted mansion. You know, like it's kids 100%. can go and enjoy it's, it's it. It's not scary, and then you get on the thing, and you're but like, I'm uncomfortable. I don't even know that a, I should be here. Even and as then a 31 around, year old, I'm there, and Kevin. I'm like sitting next to you, and you're like, ah. <laughs> I'm brave. I'm brave right now. I'm brave, but I'm not. Big time brave, but not that brave. I understand. We've all been there. Um, like I said, Ghostbusters logo comes up. We get the song for the first time. It's split into two words, which I drove me crazy. Never noticed that. Drove me fucking crazy. That's crazy. Still does this day. Also, it's a very you know older design of the No Ghost logo. Obviously, Maybe long before that was like think so that fucking everyone. And they did that because they originally weren't going to call it Ghostbusters, and they were like, "We're we're hedging our bets here, and then we're just going to do the Ghost first, and then fix well, the next word later." Possibly. <laughs> I remember, of course, yeah, it wasn't it. It was going to be originally called Ghostbusters, but there was the legal battle over the Funimation, the Ghostbusters thing, where they had to get a thing for that. So they did a, a whole bunch of alternate takes of everything, where they call them Ghost Chasers, the Ghost Chasers, Breakers, wasn't it? Eventually, again. Well, there was a several, but Ghost Chasers no, was Ghost Chasers. Definitely That's was one terrible. Thing. I'm glad they didn't go. Yeah, with they, that. And, Ghost yeah. Chasers. if you ever if you ever get a chance, watch the um the the that series on Netflix, Netflix. called the Movies That Made Movies Us. Movies That Made Us. Because yeah. the guy. The way they ended up getting the Ghostbusters title back and actually getting the legal use for that is the crazy. I mean, you want to talk about kismet. You want to talk about the stars aligning for this movie to be what it was. That's a perfect example of it. I heard it's because they were in the music uh, booth and they were like, chasing makes me feel good. Like, no, that doesn't, no, it work. doesn't work. They came back <laughs> no. on it like, just say busting because like busting makes me feel good could never be interpreted any other way. And then, you know, Ray Parker Jr. is <laughs> like, you know what? I am. I will say that. And well, hey, don't mention busting, that we're ripping dude. off Huey Lewis in the news. And they were yeah, like, what? Like, no, don't worry. Just go. <laughs> uh, remember, there was a lawsuit about that. It was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, so now we're at Columbia University where we uh, go over to the Department of Psychology or Parapsychology where we see it's, uh, you know, Venkman, Stance, and Egon Spangler on the door. And, of course, Venkman burn in hell written in paint <laughs> on the, the thing. We yeah, go one, in of the, one of the facts that I saw was that uh, there was a lot of, like, sexually explicit things written on, uh, on the, his office door. And uh, they were like, we want this to be a little more family friendly. So then they changed it to the burn in hell or whatever. Hell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we come inside and uh, Pete Venkman, Dr. Pete Venkman, is uh, doing an experiment here uh, about the effects of negative reinforcement on ESP. Uh, so he's quizzing a guy and a girl on the cards he's holding up and they get electric shocks when they get it wrong. And this girl is just knocking it out of the park, getting everyone right. And it turns out she's not getting any of them right, of course. Right. But Pete Venkman, of course, is kind of a creeper. <laughs> in, in a 2021 yeah, lens of watching 
Pete Venkman, you're like, huh, if this wasn't Bill Murray, like the most famed comedic actor of the time, and even now, like you're not being charming Bill Murray, right? It's everything he does in this movie, you're like he's mm. literally torturing a guy just yeah. so he can get to he take this girl out. Like this guy got a couple of them right, which is the sad well, thing. Well, yeah, when he gets it right, he still shocks him. Yeah, still of course, shocks him. really how it but is. I do, want to, I do want to point out though, I, I have a special place in uh, in the in my heart for this actress because she was on Charles in Charge. She played the Gwendolyn Pierce she on Charles in Charge for the longest time. And, and so I that's where I knew her from. So seeing her in Ghostbusters, I was like, she made Wait a it. minute. Actors can be in different, like they can be on TV and in movies. This is weird. <laughs> Dude, you want I mean, you, again back to you know little Greggy watching this movie and being obsessed with it. Like my parents, my mom having to explain to me when we'd watch another Bill Murray movie or whatever Dan Aykroyd of like it's not you know these they are actors and this yeah. isn't him. And I was like, okay, I got like, it. But I, like, pack I, yeah, out. anybody who was in Ghostbusters obviously yeah, got that. the pass. They were fucking awesome. I, I will say shout out to Bill Murray because I think that there is something about just him as an actor and his comedic chops and just how you know, charming he can be or whatever is like, dude's got one of the ugliest head of hairs ever. And it oh, just terrible. doesn't matter. Sure. Like, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't his skin matter. Is bad. He's got the pop marked like skin too. Like he's like, just not, he's not a traditional. This is the eighties, man. You could look like that and be a movie star. It's true. Yeah, and no, also, yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. But they I think just shave like, your teeth down, slam some veneers in there. I think there are some actors that we would ass. Th there are definitely Jeez. some actors that we would point out like, Oh yeah, that dude like he lost his hair and whatever, whatever, or like whatever, like something about their physical appearance you can always kind of pinpoint or whatever yeah. as to make it seem like a negative or whatever. I've said the word whatever so many times. I'm sorry, whatever. but Bill Murray is just it just doesn't matter what he's just so cool and great and f keep doing what you're doing, Bill Murray. I hope to see Lord you in many Bill. more movies in the future. But before we get back to the plot, let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Uncommon Goods. If you're on a mission to be the best gift giver ever this season, it's never too early to start looking. No matter who you're shopping for, Uncommon Goods is the place to find remarkable and truly original gifts for anyone. Some of the cool things I got recently were the, there's a baseball park map pint glasses that I got for one of my good friends, James Burke. He doesn't know it's coming yet, but he is going to absolutely love the Oracle Park one. Uh, and also Gia got this puzzle that is really cool. Puzzles are always a fun thing, right? Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade. They have the most meaningful, out of the ordinary gifts anywhere. And with every purchase you make, Uncommon Goods gives $1 back to a nonprofit partner of your choice. So make your holiday season stress-free. Check out their selection of thousands of items. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash kinda funny. That's uncommongoods.com slash kinda funny for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer for U-N-C-O-M-M-O-N-G-O-O-D-S dot com slash kinda funny. We're all out of the ordinary. Uh, next up, shout out to me undies. Are you afraid of the glow in the dark? Well, shield your eyes because the new me undies Halloween just dropped dead. If there's one collection you don't want a ghost, it's this one. I always love uh, MeUndies. I always love their themed collections, and I especially love when they get fun, like with the Halloween ones. We're glowing in the dark, baby. MeUndies are made from natural fibers sourced from beechwood trees, making their micro-modal fabric soft, breathable, and dangerously cozy. And I can attest to all of that. Of course, even right now, wearing my MeUndies shirt, my lounge pants, my undies, and socks. I love the micro-modal fabric all over my body. It is so soft, and I love being a big, soft boy. You can get your spooky season up and haunting with five new prints i see you my boo tricks and treats lazy bones and lazy pumpkin me undies has a great offer for you first time purchasers out there you can get 15 percent off and free shipping to get 50 percent off your first order free shipping and 100 percent satisfaction guarantee go to meundies.com slash morning that's meundies.com slash morning and finally, shout out to HelloFresh. Spooky season is also extra busy season, but one thing you can take off your plate is meal planning and grocery shopping because HelloFresh is here to keep you stocked and chopped. They deliver pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering recipes directly to you. We're talking fresh, going from the farm to your door within a week, so you get the convenience without the sacrifice in quality. HelloFresh offers fantastic variety with over 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, 
Marion, so it works great for Paula and Kevin, Calorie Smart, and even gourmet options. And they're bringing out all the fall options too, like one pot broccoli mac and cheese to make weeknight meals super easy. That sounds fantastic, and I really, really hope that I get to try that one. Cool Greg's been using HelloFresh. Blessing's been using HelloFresh. Kind of funny, is a HelloFresh family. Go to HelloFresh.com slash morning14 and use code morning14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's up to 14 free meals, including free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash morning14. Use code morning14. Okay, it, so, uh, you know, as we already covered all the stuff, you, you've you seen the movie, you know what's happening. He's clearly just using this to hit on this girl, <laughs> Jennifer. Uh, so, he, and he, you know, uses the whole thing of after that, you can keep the five bucks, I've had it. I will, mister. Uh, that guy runs off, you know, Bill goes, this, you should get used to it, Jennifer. That's the kind of thing your skills going to bring out people. <laughs> but yeah. even that joke, he's giving this guy electric shocks therapy he's shocking the you shit you volunteered out of him. for this aren't you we're paying for you five dollars <laughs> that's that that that's always got me when i was like i was like oh my god it's, it's for five bucks that's to go through 80 <laughs> questions to get 80 <laughs> like, shots right 70 more cards <laughs> to go which is also the funny thing the more you want to drill into the joke about it right of like you know he's shocking him over and over again even leading up to when he gets it right while we're watching but also it means that like this hasn't been going on for hours like pete venkman didn't just be like man this guy's pissed me off in the middle of this yeah from this start he's like fuck this guy zap 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 (laughs) no reason no reason i'm gonna just sort of hop in with a sort of an aside here i was about to go uh to the restroom really really quick and i pulled out my headphone my ear my headbud earbud had a little bit of a panicky moment because the earbud stayed in my ear (laughs) i popped it out of the right side kevin and it just stayed in there had my heart kind of like oh shit (laughs) I was like, it's oh, there yeah. forever now. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be right yeah, I, what I've done before is I get my Leatherman, pull them out, get the little pliers, get in there. <sighs> beep, whoop, real easy. Real easy. And I got cool. them in there deep, Greg. Here. Deep. <laughs> I believe you, Captain. I believe you. You got those. I've known for a long time about your deep ear canals. That's a well-known kind of. Place. We talk about it actually. It's canals in the room. We talk about how mm-hmm. much. Anyways, Ray Stance runs in. This is it. This is it. Runs in and uh, tells Pete he needs the tape. He needs the, ta- the tape recorder. The tape you erased last. Week, you know, where you. Uh, uh, Pete jumps up, does the slap in the back of the head. Jennifer doesn't see it. I'm right in the middle of something, Ray. Uh, and it, 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 Ray lays it out that this is the, this is it, man. Uh, libra- library and at the New York Public Library there. There's been a ghost sighting. This is the one blew, knocked the socks off some poor librarian. We got to get down there right away. Uh, you know, Egon's already there. Uh, Spangler's already there and buried the needle on what is going on. And he's like, you go down there. You get right back to me. He's like, no, no. I need you to go one. down there. <laughs> get right back to me. Get right back to me. Uh, and so, you know, Pete says goodbye to Jennifer. Does the line uh, Nick referenced earlier. Eight o'clock. She's, I was just going to say. Like, eight we o'clock. can see each other. She's like, eight o'clock. I was yeah. just going to say. Eight o'clock. <laughs> Such a bullshit artist. It's so uh, then it's you know we're back to the New York Public Library. Uh, Pete and Ray walking in. I'm trying not to do every line, but I love the delivery. Of so many line. lines. <laughs> this is going I, four hours, people. As a friend, I got to tell you, you finally gone around to the bend on this ghost bust, this ghost business. You, you've been meeting and greeting every schizo in the five boroughs. <laughs> of course, Pete, you forget that I was there for an under, unexplained mass sponge migration. <laughs> migrated five, about a foot and a half, and about then a foot he goes down half. there doing his thing, and he slams the book, and he does the you go on. Uh-huh. I like uh, there. There are so many lines like that in this. movie movie that i just can imagine you and nick having a moment over because you're just kind of repeating a random line for a movie you both love and yeah that moment of they what do they say they migrated migrated about us there for (laughs) unexplained migration it's such a great line (laughs) it's such a great also uh, you know shout out to my mom here because again like what we're talking about this movie not designed for kids and i had learned early not to yell bastard because uh back to the future when i yelled bastard i got in Mm -hmm. trouble so every like there'd be like when i wanted to say mother puss bucket like run into the kitchen and be like mom am i allowed to say mother puss bucket and she's like yes you can say all right thank you run back you know what i mean like all this shit (laughs) Anyways, uh, you know uh, the you know the three Ghostbusters here are established. They're walking through the thing. Uh, this is another great line. Of, you know, Egon. This reti- reminds me of the time you tried to drill a hole through your head. <laughs> that would have worked. worked if you hadn't stopped me. <laughs> uh, then we get in there. They start That's such interview- a Kevin moment. We're like, oh, we totally. stopped Kevin from drilling a hole. Totally, in his head. totally. If he hadn't stopped me. <laughs> 
Uh, we get into the back room, uh, right? You know, Alice is there. It de- I can't remember if it had legs, but definitely his arms because they reached out. Oh, I can't wait to get a look at this thing. Uh, you know, Ray's filming. They're going around. They're getting the valances. Pete starts asking questions about, you know, are you habitually using drugs? There was the one before of like any mental illness. My uncle thought he was St. Jerome. Oh, God. I'd call that a big yes. I'd call that a big yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd call it, that a big yes. And then again, like, I, I, you want to talk about like how this movie, you know, obviously went a different direction than I think anybody would have thought it was, right? You know, are you Alice menstruating right now? What has that got to do? with anything back off man i'm a scientist i remember as a whatever four-year-old five-year-old having my ghostbusters belt that was like mass produced this isn't like a custom job i you know my mom bought it at kmart or whatever that said on it back off man i'm a scientist i love that like, the line before it are you on your period yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just, what cues you know, the most, go- the so most dismissive this creating thing you could you could talk you say to a woman if she's claiming that something happened right yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, so then from there, you know, uh, Egon busts back in. It's moving. He's got the PKE out. He's going through. They all run down into the lo- the stacks where we had seen it before. Uh, you know, uh, more great stuff with Bill Murray doing like this when, you know, he's making fun of Ray. Uh, they run into the books being stacked up. He's like, you know, just like the mass disturbance of whatever the year is. I don't have that one down. I'm he's sorry. Like, you're right. And right. then, yeah, no you're human right. being would stack books like that. <laughs> <laughs> that and one then and- we get. The other yeah. banger in this, and I always feel bad, Greg, because I You're feel like Dan that line. Aykroyd's line is overshadowed by what Bill Murray just said. Yeah. But he goes, quiet. You smell that? <laughs> no, he goes, listen. <laughs> listen. Do you smell it? You smell yeah. that? And, and Pete, and again, Bill Murray does the, like, what? And then he what? does the... <laughs> He starts sniffing, trying to do what it is. They come around the corner. It's the cards. They're, they have ectoplasm all over it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Egon, very excited, gives the little Petri dish to Vankman, asks him to go do, to get it. Somebody blows your nose and you want to keep it. I want to analyze it. Uh, he starts scraping it off, you know, half-assing it as uh, Vankman would do. And then he gets it on his hand. He starts doing this sh- shit, oh, gets it on his eyes. Get, then he's, the wife's oh. hand in the books. Does the, this is a, I remember in the, the commentary how this is all obviously improv of how can you plan to get it on your eyes, on your feet or whatever on you. So he does all that and gets it. Comes around the corner. Egon, your mucus. Uh, bookshelf falls down behind them. And this is the first time that Ray, uh, Pete is like, wait a second, maybe this is more than that. And turns to Ray. He's like, this ever happened to you before? And Ray just does first time. First time. Mm, he shakes his head, yes, right? Uh, they start following the PKE. They start going around and they sure as shit. Egon turns, uh, you know, down into, turns the corner. And there it is, the gray lady herself, uh, the ghost uh, that we all know is purple. Eventually would be given a name, of course, in Ghostbusters, the video game, Eleanor Twitty. First, I'm sure you all remember. I'm sure you again, this, this first image, right? scary not yeah, it is not like oh light like they could have redesigned her to be more cartoony which you're going to see later in like in, in ghostbusters 2 but in this one it's like this is a fully formed like large woman. shit yeah it's yeah. terrifying now and even, she... and even, like and it's and it's also terrifying because she's beautiful and so you're like uh that's creepy because some shit's gonna fucking happen here right now now I she could have they could have gone the gory route and made it look like the zombie cabbie guy or whatever mm-hmm. Um, but this scene just very reminiscent to me of the sixth sense of just kind of him looking around the corner. They're just being like a dead person kind of standing there. Like yeah. it's, it's off putting that, that's know? the form yeah. that it's in. And then when she jumps out and freaks him out, Greg, yeah. I, I was about to fucking call you out and be like, Hey, you, you said this wasn't scary. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm glad you stuck it out and, though. You know what I mean? And it- and when when I was a kid, this is the moment where I was like, fucking hey, all right, I, I have to be because like earlier, like I said, I already was like, mm-mm. Kind of not feeling it. This seems like this is not for me. This is a little scary. And then now it's like, all right, cool. All right. We're I don't in know, the this, shit. I thought this was a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was one of the most culturally empowering comedies of all time. Uh a whole bunch of great stuff happens here, I feel. Uh, you know what I mean? Where it's like they're all excited to finally see a ghost and Pete's like so what do we do and Egon and Ray look at each other and then he grabs Ray by the ear and pulls him over Francine can I talk to you for a second yeah. uh, and the, he's like one of us they, they're like one of us should try to make contact one of us should talk to and they both look at uh, Pete Vank oh, I, I missed the thing where Egon crunches numbers on his he's little like, couch stop, stop that, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes out there he does the, tr- the you know Pete does the only thing he knows which is try to pick up a chick right of like where are you from originally, originally. <laughs> hi I'm Peter alright the usual stuff's not working and Ray's like alright 
right, I got it. I know just what to do. And he comes around. All right, one, two, three. Get her. <gasps> it comes up. They get chased out. This is the over <laughs> part of it or whatever. <laughs> right. But it leads to another great scene, I think, of them, you know, Pete and uh, Ray walking and talking and being friends in this thing, right? Yeah. Get her. That was your big plan. That was I'm sorry, I just got overexcited. Shout out to like Ray, him. man. Scientific. <gasps> you know, I, I feel like uh, he's the one of the Ghostbusters that I feel like, well, I guess Ernie as well. But uh, you, know, you hear about Egon. You obviously hear yeah. about Bill Murray. But I, Ray is the homie. I, I, yeah, I yeah, think totally. he might be, like he the might heart be my favorite. Right? Yeah, I and love you it. See that, you see that in the scene, too, when they go into business and he's like, and Peter's like, this place is terrible. And, Her- and Harold Ramis is like, they're each they're each exhibiting what their character's for, right? Pete's the, the, the uh, skeptic. He's an asshole. He doesn't really, like, he's just trying to be opportunistic and capitalize off of this. Harold Ramis is the scientist. He's the one that's just nuts and bolts, ones and zeros. And then you see, he's like, this is pool working? This is amazing. We should sleep here tonight. Like, he's, Dan Aykroyd's character is the heart of it. And so that's why I love is they all, in this movie, and you're when you watch these characters, how they evolve into the second movie, because the only one really allowed to do the laughs or to have the joke and wink to the audience is Bill Murray. Everyone else is playing it straight. They're in character the whole time. And that's why it works with the rare exception of Dan Aykroyd going a little too zany with some of the movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even that, that's not that much. Right. Uh, I can't wait to smile this whole can't fucking Can't talk about that. That was fucking weird. The what scene? What's that? Oh, blowjob like, scene? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll get that I, for sure. I love that part once <laughs> again. But I just, just to point out, one of the things I always notice about this is how – deadpan harold ramus is every single time sure like there is one look he gives when they're closing the doors to the ballroom where he kind of winks at the guy and that's like the only time he breaks his own like harold ramus breaks that, sure, that veneer yeah, yeah yeah uh but yeah it's the walk here right of like i got so excited blah, blah, blah. uh egon runs up he's been running numbers behind them he's like i do think that you know based on these new th- numbers there's a great chance that we can actually catch a ghost and contain it indefinitely and this is you know Egon, i'm gonna take back some of the things i've said about it you <laughs> you you've earned it and gives him a nestle crunch bar <laughs> <It's> so degrading <laughs> it's like and then dan Aykroyd smiles dan like yeah that's good <laughs> yeah exactly like you got him that's a funny one uh and this is where we get then go back to columbia university where dean yeager is having everybody remove you you are a poor scientist, Dr. Bankman. I, I see. Uh, this is then the conversation out there uh, that has the bottle of, that, of booze that looks like the Love cold it. brew I had the other day that I was mm-hmm. talking about, where uh, it's uh, Pete know. and Ray going back and forth about it, about what to do and what they're going to do now. Yeah. You, you've, you've never been out of college. I've worked in the private sector. They expect results. <laughs> and then the stirring speech from Bill Murray, right, or Bankman, of like, call it fate, call it luck, call it oh, karma. Yeah. I believe we are destined to get kicked out of this dump. <laughs> Why? Yeah. To go into business for ourselves. And then he's like, this is going to be a lot of money. Where are we going to get it? I don't know, Ray. Right? I don't know. know. As he's drinking, followed as he's taking a sw- like a Just massive swig of this, getting that whisk. Booze. You know what I mean? Uh, then we come out of Manhattan Bank. You're never gonna regret this, Ray. Which is when I finally peer pressured Poe into buying his own PS2. We left EB, and that's what I said as I opened the door for him. Uh, <laughs> It's them walking though and going over it. Like you, you, it, 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 my parents left me that house. I was born there. Don't worry about it. Everybody has three mortgages nowadays. Nineteen percent. You don't even bargain with the guy. Nineteen percent. The yeah, interest rate for the third mortgage, thing, right? Uh, but again, it's the franchise rights alone will make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. Because of course, Bankman does. Oh, I, th- there's a great line from Dean Yeager again. Like you're talking about Nick that sets up these characters, right? Where he's like. You know, we think science, Dean Yeager says, we think science is for the betterment of mankind. You seem to, seem to think of science as a dodge or hustle, right? Mm-hmm. And immediately on this thing, it's a dodge or a hustle, right? Like, we'll, hustle, make, we'll right. franchise this Repeat. indispensable disposal extermination unit we're going to make here. Like, that's what I'm really doing this for. Not for the science part of it at all. Uh, from there, we uh, m- meet one of my favorite characters in Ghostbusters, the firehouse. Uh, we, of course, are getting a walkthrough with the realtor, like you're saying. Where, and this is, again, exactly what you just talked about, Nick, right? Where it's just pricey for a unique fixer upper for Vankman. What do you think, Egon? Uh, the neighborhood's like, a, you know, the power doesn't work. There's serious metal fatigue and all the load bearing structures, and the neighborhood is like a demilitarized zone. Right? So, <laughs> yeah. so they're all done with it. But of course, Ray, who has now taken out this huge mortgage, does this pole still work? Slides down, loves it. For me personally, and I, you know, obviously at the end of the movie he goes Ray Stance Dr. Ray Stance ladies and gentlemen the heart and soul of Ghostbusters uh, like it is so true and you can see it in this moment and for me personally when we, I talk about kind of funny that's Kevin right oh, 100% like, the excitement this is Kevin. and I want to be a part of it and let's do it and what crazy thing are we going to do and I love you for it Kevin you'll always be my Ray let's sleep over here let's have yeah yeah let's try it out it's, tonight you know tonight. Uh, and, 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 and again back to the guys. you know the 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 slow pl- not even the slow play but like you know the thing here of like where there's then the beat of ray going upstairs uh vinkman looks over at egon and egon just has like the slowest no head shake of all time just and he turns no. back to the, I, think, I think we'll take it and egon's like just feet at it right well because the the, the it, subtlety of that scene too is great because he 
Pete's obviously trying to get a lower, better deal on this, right? If they're going to take this play, I always read it sure. as like, yeah. they're negotiating and then Dan Aykroyd comes in and it just totally blows it out of the water. Like, yeah, fuck, yeah. any negotiating shit we had is now gone. We have no more leverage. And that's and why that's the, sales like, and the, real, with it, right? the realtor is like, hell yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The realtor yeah, plays yeah. it great. I forgot that yeah. actress's name, but she's like, mm, yeah, I got you, motherfuckers. He loves yeah. this. Uh, from there we go to well, the I was going to ask, oh, Greg, how does this translate to the 2016 Ghostbusters? Would would she would that be like the uh melissa mccarthy character that you're comparing me to there we don't need to bring that in future spoilers we're gonna be in a good place today kevin i thought you wanted to have a lot of fun here (laughs) but no future spoilers no future spoilers so we get you're right yeah you want to know can't wait i as you know i don't follow and this is this is gonna sound like an insult i swear it's not i don't follow the tim uh, getty's method here right of like oh i want to watch all these things in uh, i want every movie in 4k i want it all to be the best thing yada 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 last night when i i opened up my and blew all the dust off my physical media i grabbed the ghostbusters blu-ray and put it in and i was like wait they've done 4ks of these ordered the 4k blu-ray for ghostbusters ghostbusters 2 and like the fucking shake head shake i did as i bought ghostbusters 2016 on 4k i'm like motherfucker god damn it yeah. <laughs> suits i might as well have it it exposes the matte paintings hard oh dude well, i mean like a, what it another is. thing if you and that's blu-ray in general and that's honestly just looking at the movie i i think again so much is happening in a product time yada yada but like the, i was about to say the next place we go to is on the next building right dana barris apartment central park west spook central and the introduction of that thing like, is the wide shot clearly a matte painting and then they go up and do the shot overhead of one of the terror dog gargoyles yeah. right and if you watch you can see the cab drive through it yeah because it's just it. a, you know, a matte painting over it, the thing that they but put so, in and later so on the whole thing like rocks when uh, state puffs coming out for the right reasons yes, that's right. that's the important to note right when you when you go back and watch any of the documentary and stuff on this they were getting these they had so many shots they had to do yeah. that the the effects house which i don't think was ilm i think it was um whatever the competitor was at the time right the guys that left ilm and then like had formed another house doesn't matter um weta? i think it no it wasn't weta it was they're they're defunct now i don't think i think it was a bunch of mm-hmm. island guys left decided to do their own thing and this was like one of the first jobs they had i could be getting that wrong but anyway they talked about how they were like we would send them shots for review and get no feedback and then those shots like these would some of these shots were like hey this is our first pass at this what Let do you know. think yeah, yeah, and yeah. right then put it in the movie because they were moving at such a fast clip they had to hit that date to get the movie out so the state puff shot is one of the ones they talk about where he's like that was a temp shot the guy was like that was not we were not done with that shot uh but they just put it in and that's why you can see a lot some of the map painting just doesn't work it doesn't sure yeah, yeah. you needed another hack at it and they also i got, I got the answer like for you What's uh, that? during the fact I, just i got i got the answer to your question here so during the film's 13 month production all the major special effects studios working on other films the largest ilm had been booked for indiana jones and the temple of doom and return of the jedi the remaining studios were too small to work on the approximately 630 individual effects needed for ghostbusters at the same time special effects cinematographer richard edland planned to leave ilm and start his own business reitman convinced columbia to collaborate with mgm which also needed an effects studio to advance money to him to start his own company boss film studios uh, awesome. and purchase the necessary equipment so yeah and they did they did quite a few movies in the 80s i think before i think before going out of business or or being sold off to ilm but yeah it's cool it's definitely interesting and like they did the the even like there's there's the famous concept i'm sure we'll talk about when we get the slimer but how they were like you know as an homage to to john belushi they were like let's make him look like that and the guy but in the the interview the guy in the documentary and he was like they told me that the night before i was supposed to present this thing that i had been working on for like three weeks and so he goes, when they showed up, I just told him I did it. And they were like, he looks great. <laughs> he looks exactly like him. <laughs> but it looks nothing like him. Uh, so, yeah, that's all awesome and true. Uh, so now back to the plot. Uh, we show up at Dana Barrett's apartment. She gets out of a cab with some groceries. Jay walks because she's uh, like, a New Yorker. I, I'm sorry. I know we're going very long. Stop. For a you think I'm mad about going long on Ghostbusters? <laughs> they, or, you think that's you my guys, problem right now? They got Sigourney Weaver to be in this movie. Was just, that a big deal then, though? Yeah, because she was huge from Alien. Right, that was really big. And, and, right? Yeah, but she, she really like, wanted to do it, you like to get it, like you know what I mean. Like, remember she? There's the whole thing of her barking and acting like a dog or whatever, and the audition yeah. and stuff. And Ivan like, was like, "This person's crazy. We need her." <laughs> like, wait, but wait, she wait, was a on. pretty so serious barks? actor. I mean, she she hadn't done like silly shit. I don't think she'd done a comedy to this point. And so, like, the fact that they got her in was just such an inspired choice. Set her up perfectly for Galaxy Quest. Because when did Aliens come out? I think that came out before this, right? What a good movie, Andy. What a great oh, right. movie. Wasn't it? Alien- Oh, that was 86. That was two years later. But Alien oh. was... was wow, 80, my timeline 83? is... Alien, Alien was 79. So Holy shit, I was way off on that Jesus. one. Jesus. Yeah. 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 
Anyways, Sigourney Weaver, uh, she got her groceries. She's going upstairs. This is where we get introduced to Louis Tully across the way from her. Of course, he's got a crush on her. Uh, she clearly wants nothing to do with him. Uh, he's, you know, in his, his velour ch- or velvet tracksuit or whatever it is. It, it's Oblast. dope, right? Kevin. That's yeah, a good Kevin. looking tracksuit. Kevin. And again, the whole thing I'm of like, he's always scheming on something, right? He's always scheming on something. He's, he taped a 20 minute workout, plays it back at double speeds or half speeds or t- double speeds. So he gets a 10 minute workout, does a great workout. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, he, uh, why, you know annoys dana all the way to her apartment before saying of course you know like oh yeah and it reminds me you shouldn't leave your tv on so loud when you go out you know the creep down the hall phone the manager so i i try i tried to crawl out on the ledge and get in to do it and i couldn't so i just turned it up so people think thanks lewis and the door just slams in his face and the doctor goes up and comes down all right i'm gonna take a shower yeah i'm gonna have a shower i'm gonna have a shower all of this dialogue is just fantastic it 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 comes across as such a natural sort of thing for somebody that weird and quirky to say <laughs> and another understated joke that i i it a, a disturbingly long time before i was somebody pointed out somewhere right of like he's the key master but every scene he gets locked out of his apartment locked out of his apartment i was like oh, i never i never, never put that together i never, I never put thought that together. about that that's, that's funny. so funny uh, dana goes in the tv's playing an ad from the ghostbusters of Wait. course not them in their usual uniforms yeah go ahead that that is hilarious and like it's genius to the level of like how do you think of that and like Make that a running like I don't understand how running gags like that get made and then like you know Dan Aykroyd ta- like how are they not talking about that for the rest of their lives? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's inspired. <laughs> that's just what it was though. I think back then, right? Is you like they give these characters and they make a choice and that's uh, cool. That's a funny thing and they just go on because they want I guess want the layers like that or whatever. Uh, like I said though, uh, Ghostbusters ad is playing there. It's them in their little blue uh, coats or whatever with all their dumb equipment and we're ready to believe you. Uh, Dana turns it off. Uh, and then, you know, like it takes a load off in our apartment there for a second, goes into the kitchen eventually, puts down her groceries, uh, then goes to put some stuff away after putting this down scared me the eggs and, of course, eggs. the Stay Puff Marshmallows. Again, like another movie I think would have driven it home so many more times of like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man is a thing in this universe, right? right. Like this is a oh, thing Lord, because there's like the marshmallows, marshmallows there with him on the bag. And then at one point there's like a brick billboard of him. Like, that's it. That's like you're supposed to extrapolate in the theater on your first viewing that this is a thing that is, is when the universe doesn't matter. You know, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that must be a brand that we just don't have in Southern California. Sure. I was sure, sure, sure. Was it not a brand? This wasn't a thing? Nah, oh, a thing. shit. Get yeah. the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, I'm with Nick where I just I just assumed it was something I didn't know, but I thought no, it was We never real. had marshmallows. I thought it was a real brand, yeah. The funniest yeah. thing that Gia who enjoyed this movie way more than I expected her to. It was this seed that she asked her first question of just like, she's like, I don't believe this woman would be buying marshmallows. <laughs> like, right? 100%. A weird, yeah. weird fucking thing. But also when you look at her spread of what she has, it's like, that's fucking weird. <laughs> it's such a, it's such the movie bag of groceries with the celery yeah. box coming but up the top. So he, like, <laughs> here's how I rationalize that. If you live alone and you're single and you're in New York, you got every, maybe you have that one vice, right? For some people, it's Oreo cookies. For me, it's like, you know, uh, goldfish crackers. Maybe she just really likes housing marshmallows at the end of the night. Like, <laughs> there's, I mean, if you want, uh, trust me, as someone who's overanalyzed this movie so many fucking times, I can give you two different takes on it. Would you like why I think there's more questions to be asked about that? Or, you know what, I'll just do both ones. Number one, Dana Barrett's bedroom, right? On both of her bedside tables, she has photos of children. And yeah, I'm like, that, so are those like your nieces? That. So maybe maybe she bought the marshmallows. I've always thought because her nieces were going to come over eventually. Maybe, maybe she yeah. sees them. Okay. Now to go the, the more negative route with it, of course. When Vankman opens her ginormous refrigerator Big and fish. it's stocked with leftovers and Coca Colas and then this unopened thing of bologna or whatever, it's also like, is Dana eating this? Is this <laughs> why she got so much weird ass food in there? Well, the, well the, you know, but the, but not to dig too deep into this though. What is the use of the big marshmallow in an apartment that size? Because the big marshmallow is for s'mores, s'mores, right? Sure. Yeah. The no. small marshmallows are for hot you, cocoa, which you can just uh, yeah. traditionally put in. Like you'd make hot cocoa. I get it. Your niece and nephew's coming over. We're gonna make hot cocoa. We're gonna put some marshmallows on top of the small marshmallows. You can't no, put I, a big marshmallow on top you of those can. things. Nick, you, you ever been you depressed, know, Nick? You ever been depressed? You just fucking it doesn't no, matter I, what the what the size of a thing is. You're just sticking that shit in your mouth because you're like, I gotta eat my feelings, like. But, can yeah. I tell you what else bothered me about this scene, though? Love when she you. opens up the fridge, there's two different styles of Coca-Cola can in there. And it but always like, bothered me. I'm like, what no, did see, you get I've... these at two different times? No, you're wrong. Don't you remember? I know you're talking about the Coke logo, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, remember the cans used to have Coke on, on two. It, it, the cans had two different Coke logos on the side. Oh, I didn't remember that. Time. I didn't know that. Yeah, this one used to drive me crazy of like people being like, "Oh, Cinema Sins." Here's a here's a fucked up scene when her and Vankman are talking. Yeah. Because there's two cans of Coke in there, but like w- the one way it's shot, one time it makes it look like it turned. When it didn't turn, it's just a second can of Coke. And I'm like, Don't why does Andy's fridge that. have uh, a blue mountain doing a green? That's like not con- that is continuity is off. One of them is USA. One of them is the standard one. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. July fourth. USA Andy, baby. Andy knows. <laughs> uh, anyways, the eggs start frying it right on the countertop. Dana's uh, perplexed and scared by that, of course. Uh, and then we hear a growl from the fridge. She opens it up, and it is not a normal fridge. It is in fact uh, the little uh, you know portal to another dimension the triangle in the back there uh and it's a terror dog that says Zoo. she Greg, screams this, this, and the door as a child this also scared me terrifying. i understand that. i can understand yeah. that that'd be scary terrifying. but i think a lot of it is that, sigourney weaver's performance kevin okay. i think it's her fear and her shock no, and it, it was the eggs oh for me. the yeah. eggs oh. were terrifying the fact they like, that they like cook a little right oh yeah, yeah they cook all they the way cook. Yeah, yeah remember because when he comes later he picks one of them up and it's fried and he kind of like wobbles he's like let's check the fridge there's another great one in the document or the commentary where they talk. They were talking about special effects. Like, yeah, how did you guys pull off that effect? And they're just like, yeah, we tried this and we tried this, and then we just put a frying. We just put heat. <laughs> we just put heat under there. We couldn't figure yeah. it out, so we yep. just put heat. <laughs> but also, I just want to shout out like the the art direction in this. Right, they, she opens it up, and it's this beautiful haunting image. It's not like scary. It's not dark. It's bright. It's vibrant. It's like a pyramid. Mm, it's that colorful. Like, the, it's yeah. all there. And then you and then it cuts in on the on the terror dog, and he's like, you know, and you see all the stuff. But like. The actual – that's what scared me. I was, I was like, whoa, there's a whole other dimension in a, in your fridge, and now I'm scared of my refrigerator? Like, that's what this movie's going to do to me? That's why it's so cool. Yeah. Uh, she slams the door, and we go back to Ghostbuster HQ where they're putting up a very small Ghostbuster sign, a very thin Ghostbuster sign, very flat against the fire house drive. You don't think it's too subtle, Marty? You don't think people drive by and won't see the sign? Uh, then uh, the Ecto-1, uh, before its uh, makeover rolls up, Dan Aykroyd driving, you can't park that here! <laughs> From Everybody Hillary. relax, I found the car. This gives yeah. me so much anxiety because he was like, it was a steal, man. I got, yeah. it, for, he's like, I got it for $4,800. 40, 40, 40, yeah. And it needs, After listing all the problems, right? It only needs one brake, of which brake was pads, a transmission. It needs yeah. a new transmission. How much? <laughs> only thirty eight hundred. And again, Nakeman's face drops or whatever. Uh, from there, we go back in, or we go in the firehouse, right? Uh, we meet Janine Melnitz for the first time, working or working, sitting there reading a People magazine with Cher on the cover at her desk. Uh, she's there, has a quick conversation with uh, uh, Pete Bankman. Any calls? No. Any no. Any, any anything? No. Uh, Type something, it, would you? Well, you were paying for this we're stuff. Paying for this stuff. <laughs> Any insulter. Quit looking at me with the bug eyes. And he goes, res- and it, now, what? as a person who's insults a lot of his coworkers, I respect this. This is maybe where I learned this, where it's like, if you insult someone and you really say something bad, he just immediately is like, Janine, sorry, sorry about, about the bug, bug eye thing. I'll be in my I'll office. In my office. <laughs> and by the way, his office is just behind her. I, I, yeah. I, never, I never caught that until this last time. We're like, it's just the open space behind her. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. actually go into the office, which is great. I, but going back to the, the car real quick, like, I appreciate seeing it before it turns into the Ecto-1 because it's like, you know, I'm such a big fan of like the reveals and the power up hype moments and all that shit. And like when we do see the Ecto one actually as the Ecto one, it's just so cool. But I love this movie kind of treats itself as an origin story, treats itself as getting the gang together. And like we see the them get the the house, we see them get the car, and like the upgrades feel earned, and especially with the montage we get of all that, like them gaining success and shit. Like it's just it's again really well plotted movie, well yeah. paced as well. Yeah. It goes fast too. Like I even last, I, I watched it last night after playing something for a preview or whatever, and I was like, "Oh man, I went too long." I was in there, I'm like, "Man, I forget how much this movie cooks." Like we're going, you know what I mean? Like it's not. I was, and I was like, "This will be a quick plot recap." <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, anyways, uh, you know, no sooner does Peter go in there, apologize, and sit down at his desk. Uh, from underneath uh, uh, Janine's desk, Egon rises, right? And uh, Janine clearly making conversation, probably flirting a bit with him here, right? Trying to do this, uh, trying to get anything out of Egon. We get to the brick wall that he is. And he, in 1984, declares print is dead. <laughs> She's, and she tries that. to still go off of that. Like, oh, that's very interesting. I'm a big reader myself. <laughs> Uh, his, you know, spores, molds, and fungus is his hobby. It's the, it's the best he can do. Uh, that scene ends. We get the do-do-do. Uh, Dana Barrett enters the firehouse while Dan Aykroyd is working on the Ecto-1 laid out there. Again, this is a shot that's mirrored in the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer and it'll be in the movie as well. Same thing of the kid uh, Finn, right, working on uh, the Ecto-1. We're using the same dirty-ass mat, too, of it or whatever. Um, he... Oh, so yeah, Dana walks in and walks by it. She, this is the thing that passes Tim's test where, uh, you know, it, I'm sorry, this is the Ghostbusters, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah, I need to talk to somebody or whatever. Uh, of course, uh, Vankman hearing a woman's voice 
prairie dogs up, runs over, and then to break the fourth wall, uh, Bill Murray almost eats it really badly here. If you ever, if you ever rewatch, he runs and jumps over, but his feet catch the swinging door. And it's oh yeah! Things. If it would have gone a little bit further, he would have fucking totally. Bit I it. was shocked. I was like, that that you can't fake that. <laughs> like that yeah. obviously was just a, a shot they got. They're like, I guess we're using this one. But it, again, that adds just to the like. It just feels like these are just dudes. Yeah, it feels yeah. authentic. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and from there, we jump into, you know, they, they meet and they talk for a second. And then we go upstairs and we get the weird technology st- aspects of this, right? Where it's all three of the Ghostbusters talking to Dana, uh, asking her all these questions about what's going on. We get the purple thing where you see Dana's uh, face in the weird silhouette. And then you see uh, her getting analyzed by Egon with his giant light that blinds Bill Murray. Uh, they're all drinking Budweiser beer, which I love. This <laughs> this woman, terrified out of her mind, is showing up in this new business and they're eating cheeses and drinking beer and just yeah. like, we don't know the fuck we're doing yeah, we're just like just talking. drinking one bud there's like four bud like empty cans and it looks like a college house yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah they're just they've been partying all day yeah exactly uh, one thing i, I want to say about that shot where um ooh, what's his name egon Jamie. ivan yeah egon, egon that's it egon looks over with the light I, I don't know what it is about that shot i love the the shot from it and then the switch to perspective mm. of uh the other guy yeah. just getting blinded yeah, i just yeah. think something about that's just cool it is it is really funny. Yeah, I like that too. Um, you know, there's nothing coming up. Uh, you know, she. What do you think, Egon? She's not lying, or at least she doesn't think she. I. I she is. And like, why would I lie about this? Why? Oh, some are just nuts. You know, brown on the street. Blah blah blah. Totally and again, out of that, like spit, spit Yeah, totally. Of and this is when he really goes out. He just, you know, with a fucking full bore with nothing, right? Of like, well, you know, in these kind of cases, there's usually things we've done. He kind of does this behind her of like, what the fuck do we do? Yeah. And that's when you know, I'll check the usual literature. Uh, Ray's gonna go check the building stuff. Tobin Spirit guide space Tobin catalog. Spirit guide. We'll yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, Peter's like, I'll go, I'll, I'll go to, Dana, I'll go to Miss Barrett's apartment and check her out. I mean, I'll go check out. Ms. I'm gonna go check apartment. out Miss Barrett's yeah, apartment. Yeah. And he doesn't look like that. Yeah. Uh, from there, then, yeah, it's uh, we go to Dana Bill, uh, Dana Barrett's apartment again. This time with Pete Venkman. Uh, and you know, you can. What I like about the scene, right, is like obviously Dana's incre- an incredibly smart character. Uh, already, she's like these guys are weird when she's there. Yeah. But you can, env- I can envision the cab ride they had together there because by the time they get into the apartment, she's already kind of on her last nerve with Pete Venkman. So honest. you know he's already been full Pete Venkman in the car, yeah. a weirdo about it, right? But immediately she sees through all his bullshit of like him coming in and doing it. It's Dr. Venkman. And he does the, he, they hate this. They hate this. And he's they fucking with this. the piano like and doing all this different stuff. And again, this is back to your point. Uh, he's walking around, swimming, like a lot of space. And then it was, uh, oh man, it, you know, just, just you? you and she yeah. and he's like yeah what does he say that what's his follow-up i forget just you yeah well no he's got the one moment where he's like she's like what's in there she goes that's the no no but it's yeah it. before that i was gonna get there i was gonna get there no, anyways care. he has a great follow-up to just you something like perfect and she kind of gives it and then yeah that's the bedroom but nothing ever happened in there what a crime, what a crime. Like, oh my that's god that's the part like, that's the part where she's like all right what the fuck is going I'm on i'm done with this guy yeah you know by the way there's not there's not a there's not a, a chance i've ever like every time i pass a piano yeah. I want to do that. I want to. Oh, sure. I want to just totally. click those last two keys. And be like, they hate this. I yeah. like to torture them. <laughs> uh, uh, and then yeah, so that's all happening. And then it's the it, oh yeah, you know, you don't seem like a scientist. Yeah, usually they're pretty stiff. You're more like a game show host. Oh, that kind of like okay, that kind of gets P back in the moment. Let's go in the kitchen check it out. He goes in there. Uh, you know, Dana, are these the eggs? Like the stupidest line. <laughs> <laughs> are these the eggs? Yes, these eggs that are there fried on the countertop are the eggs I was talking about. And then she's so over him, right? I'm like, Dr. Venkman, you've come all this way. Don't you want to check the fridge? He finally opens it up. Like check I said, fridge. casserole dish, the two different Cokes. Uh, sprays in there. You know, are you sure you're using it? Well, I, I think so, right? I think so. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's no animals in here. Great. Well, either, either uh, I'm haunted or whatever. I'm completely nuts. I don't think you're crazy. That makes me feel so much better. She fun. leaves, and this is yeah. When you know Pete goes all the way, all the way ham on it, Nick of right of like, I see you. I see someone has the same problem as me. <laughs> uh, yeah, will you? Uh, you know, I come home. All I have is my work. Will you please leave? And this escalates, escalates, and eventually it gives uh, Pete the uh, uh, kick in the ass, right? Of like, I know what I'll do. I know what I'm gonna do. I'll prove myself prove to myself. you. I'll solve your little problem, and then you'll think Pete Bankman's the guy who gets things done. I wonder if he. I wonder what makes him tick. I wonder if he want, he'd be he interested in knowing what makes me tick and then yeah he goes to get you know she pushes him out she's and then he does the like no kiss pushed out again which again incredibly fucking creepy don't do this yeah but there's something about 1984 whatever i don't know but in like bill murray as well whatever right but he gets pushed out he leaves this is where you know uh 
Lewis Tully gets locked out again. We get that one thing. If they if they would have let the scene play a little bit longer, he walks by and goes to Lewis. She's like, what a woman, and keeps walking. Uh, from there, we jump back to uh, the firehouse. Uh, the it's nighttime. The boys are eating Chinese food. Uh, and you know, he's like, yeah, you, it was a little bit of a recap, right? And he's like, I need to pull some petty cash and take her out to dinner. We don't want to lose her as a client, uh, or to our first and only client. Uh, and it, it, Ray's like, well, this magnificent feast represents the last of the petty cash. Uh, if you are a, a eventually, as you know, Ghostbusters, uh, can't be separated from Greg Miller. So just a heads up, I want everybody to know if you watched the Greg way on Patreon a while back when somebody finally asked about my car, and I was like, oh no, I bought that mini cooper i i talked about on the kind of funny podcast i was going to make it into an ecto one we were going to do all this stuff to it we, i had this this entire scene shot for shot in my head of us <laughs> at the old studio desk eating chinese food and be like this represents the blast of petty cash and then have joey do the the annie potts bit right of like we got what? one the ghostbusters yes of course they're serious you yeah. do you have of course they're serious oh they'll be totally discreet we got one <laughs> right and just like i like Right now, I'm getting chills. Just like, and I, I love I'm it. skipping we through it right now. We got one, and like the fucking bus boys music kicks up, which is the the name uh, of the who, the people who sing yeah. this song. Also, right? did some songs for 48 hours. Great, so fucking good, right? And the guys come down the poles. That you know, a little bit overacting. You know, Pete brings the Chinese food. They get in there. The, we see the glimpse of the jumpsuit for the first time. They throw it on. You know, the doors open. It's the Ecto One license plate. The lights come up. It comes out. It tears out. Te- it goes. Fucking sound. Another yeah, fun one, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, the Ecto one siren's so good. Of course, it, like obviously, you have eyeballs and you've seen movies, so I don't think you're you're probably as caught off guard as the '84 audience, right? That, of course, footage had to be sped up. Yeah. Like obviously, that car tearing out, it's pretty obvious when you look at it, well, right? But like obvious Jason, because, right? Because of the steam. If they had left the sure. steam out of it, it might have been less obvious. But when you sure. see steam moving really quickly, yeah, you had to true. have the steam. It was steampunk city. Uh, Jason Reitman talked about it in uh, the, the IGN uh, Rewind Theater. He was on for Ghostbusters Afterlife's trailer of like you know they had to speed it up. They had to speed up the Ecto One uh, in post uh, for '84. But in our movie, we actually went in there and rebuilt the engine and did all this stuff so it could drift through the cornfields and do all that shit and be an actual cool. practical car, which I think is awesome. Really cool. um, car rips out of there, it runs over to the Sedgwick Hotel, pulls up out front, sirens going off the guys get out they walk in hey anybody see a ghost now what again is like again this is such great thing we've recapped it and i've talked about how i was gonna do my own car reveal this way and shit like that right like remember that like annie Potts's final line is just like oh yes they'll be totally discreet totally again discreet. like another thing that is like you catch and you hear it but like to see them for the first time in their outfit in their car with their siren with their lights like rolling up and being such an a walking advertisement right for this thing of what's right. going on Small Anybody thing for me on this one but, from a production standpoint is I love that most of the stuff was filmed in New York, which is super cool because they're like running around the streets and you can see them and they all love New York, obviously Bill Murray, SNL. But I think this shot was L.A., right? When they come in. So I think that hotel is actually in L.A. A like, lot um, if and I'm not prepared to say all, but a lot of in, the interiors are all L.A. It's yeah. exterior stuff that's New York, interior stuff. Yeah, if you look out, if you've ever been to like E3 and like bummed around downtown L.A., you look out, you can kind of see that some of the telltale signs of that. I just always think that's cool how they like. I've seen this movie a thousand times. Never even thought to look out for it. That's how. Dude, how I I, I don't know. You might know Nick because I know you're, you 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 know a lot about Ghostbusters too. But for the rest of the cast, remind me to tell. I mean, not that I'll ever forget. I'm gonna blow your mind later with an, a New York LA thing that I think is one of the craziest things in this movie. But I digress. That's a little Easter egg for you. I'm sure I'll get there in about four hours. I. Uh, they come in. It's the hotel manager. You know, he runs over there and he's like, "I hope this we we do this quickly and quietly." Well, actually, that's how he ends. Yes, sir. We do that all. We do this all the time and puts it on. That's when he gets a double take. Before then, you know, the disturbance on the twelfth floor. Most of the old staff knows. Yada 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 yada. Yeah, we handle this thing all the time. We got it. They go to the elevator. There's the fucking great line, right? Of like, what are you supposed to be? Some kind of cosmonaut? <laughs> no, nah, Star Wars Terminator. Somebody saw a cockroach up on twelve. Must be some cockroach. Another one for you, Greg. One of my favorite. It will go down in history. I'm sure it's one of my most cherished kind of funny memories. But when we did the Ghostbusters World Let's Play, where we all dressed up and wandered around San Francisco playing, when we were waiting at the light to, at like a, a few blocks away from our studio, waiting at the light to cross the street to go over, us we were standing there, and again. Ghostbusters is like such a if you're in, you're in thing. We we're standing there and some stranger walked up next to me and goes, What are you supposed to be? Some kind of cosmonaut? <laughs> I was like, Oh my god, this is amazing. Love it. Awesome. And then, you know, I'll get I'll get the next one. The I'll Ghostbusters the get one. on uh, the elevator, they ride up. And again, this is the scene we talked about earlier, right? Of like, you know, it just, it just occurred to me we've never really had a successful test of this stuff. I blame myself. I do too, says Pete to him, right? <laughs> All right, well, no, it's not switch me on. And yeah, you got moves out of the way or whatever. Such good acting right there, too. Totally, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, they get out of the elevator, and I love, again, for this 
the entire not the entirety but for the long time here right like until pete c slimer i guess like you just watch bill murray he never turns on his pack no nope. just walking Casually. arms down like he doesn't give a shit about this well like, the scene is I mean? beautifully blocked right because uh if i'm not mistaken dan Aykroyd exits first and he's in like a he's in like a military combat yeah. stance right and then Harold Ramis kind of comes around, check in the corner, and then Bill Murray just walks out dopey. Like, I, like he does, it doesn't I think matter. it's the other way. I think it's it, it's Dan comes out, Bill comes out, and then Bill comes out, comes and out then, he yeah. turns it on. Like, Egon yeah. comes out, and he's, like, turning his on for the first time. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, then they blast the maid. Uh, oh, what the I hell are you scene. doing? Uh, is, and then, this, and again, what... This poor woman has, like, three lines in this movie, and it's the best line. It's just the perfect... And you want to talk about great editing, right? The sound effects, the silence... And then just this, the perfect amount of beats until, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm we thought you were somebody else. We thought you are someone else. And I, another one. All right, else. successful test. And then she's oh, yeah, like we should up kind of faster. Yeah, we can do more she's damage just, that way. Yeah. Uh, but I again, never caught before in the back. She's trying yep. to put out one of the fires with a fucking exactly. like, Windex bottle. She has her Windex bottle. She's spraying the fire out trying to put out. Again, she just like, stays uh, there the whole time. Nothing happening, yes, right? It's terrifying. Uh, so the Ghostbusters break up. You know, Pete wanders around. Uh, Egon wanders around with the PKE meter out. Eventually, you know, uh, he's, he just heads down with it and walk. There's a guy trying to get into his room, and he comes up, pushes the guy, and it realizes he's not a ghost and gets annoyed and walks away. Uh, but yeah, Ray with a cigarette hanging. Well, not hanging right away, but it comes around the corner right, and then the cigarette dips and sticks to his lip because he sees Slimer there, a uh, disgusting blob feasting on a bunch of room service that's been left out. Um, yeah, you know, he Fankman. Fankman. Uh, he's like, oh, I got to hold him myself or whatever. Uh, throws on the another and another, you know, one perfect shot kind of thing, right? Like he, the pack's turned on, but he turns on his uh, Neutrono on, right? And then when he does, the the, the light on it like shines it's perfectly space. up into his face, so like cool. so well done, right? To show us as the audience is there's something else going on it's with on. this. Uh, you know, blasts uh, at him. Slimer freaks out, takes I'm, off. So, sorry. What's up, Cap? Oh, I was just going to say, uh, Miller is another moment that as a kid scared me. Slimer sitting there eating the food and it just falling through him. Through him. Sure. I was like, fuck, what the hell? Like, this movie's terrifying. We would see a similar scene later in a movie called Casper. And that always that uh, fucked with me too. When they'd eat and they would, they would go through. Yeah. And also, Casper canonically in the Ghostbusters universe. Yeah, uh, Ray appears in Casper and he comes out. He's like, I ain't dealing with this. You're going to have to call someone else. Who are you going to call? Off, Somebody Someone else. else. And yeah. A horrible and, uh, mustache. Like, get out of here. Yeah, it's a really bad mustache. Uh, I'm sure he was in some other thing where he had the mustache, like uh, Henry Cavill, and couldn't get rid of it. But at some point, uh, the director uh, said that, that that's canon. <laughs> that's a lot. Awesome. Awesome. I'll take it. Yeah. Are we are we reviewing? Are we watching Casper and Ghostbusters? I don't know. Review? I don't know. God Devin saw it. We could probably get Devin to watch with us. <laughs> yeah, probably. That'd be fun. <laughs> Sorry. Slimer takes off. Uh, the tray follows in his wake, smashes into the wall that vibrates because it's clearly not like a real wall. Uh, you know, there. Uh, you know, um, uh, that happens. Uh, then maybe here's where actually Egon was walking around. Uh, like one of the only slow-mo shots in the whole movie too, right? Because it hits and then it, it cuts so. to a different angle and you can see the wall really. <laughs> yeah, then yeah, it's yeah, a flat because really, really yeah. it's smashing. But it's that music score to that haunting like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just love it. I like that scene. Uh, then we eventually get back to Pete, who's wandering around, arms at his side, right? And yeah, eventually rounds the corner, and there's Slimer hyperventilating, waiting. He, he does the whole, you know, comes down here and picks it up. And he's like, Come in, Ray. Come in, Ray. Fakeman, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. It's right here, Ray. It's looking at me. He's an ugly little spud, isn't he? I think he can hear you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> move. He won't hurt you at this point. It's like, ah, it comes at him, right? And again, imagine seeing this movie, and, and I know for some of you it is, but like imagine seeing it not knowing that he's going to be okay, right? Like, what are the stakes in this universe? Uh, slams into him. We get the running, the panicky music, the twists and the, uh, turns in the hallway that always kind of remind me of The Shining. And then we get there, and yeah, Pete Venkman's down, slime. He slimed me. That's great. Actual physical contact. <laughs> Uh, calls down, calls down to oh, Egon. Calls up, right? He just went into a ballroom. He got slime. Great, sl- save some for me. <laughs> and uh, the the boys go down there, right? Uh, I feel so funky. Uh, the boys go down there, uh, where again, hotel manager is like, "If you and your staff will wait outside, we'll make sure we can wrap this up for you nice and quickly, or whatever." Uh, they go in there, they lock the door, and this is where yeah, all hell breaks loose, right? Where oh, this is actually where you know Egon gives uh, an actual plot point to the movie, right? Oh, there's something I forgot to tell you. Don't cross the streams. Uh, w- 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 don't cross the stream. Why not? It would be. Bad. Bad. I'm a little fuzzy on the whole good bad good, thing. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and all, every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. All right, that's bad. Thanks. Important safety tip, Egon. Important safety tip. I fuck. I hope that he just thought of that. That is. All right, cool. Okay, yeah. Important safety tip. <laughs> 
And so, uh, yeah, now we get into the Slimer battle, right? Where, you know, we see him. Uh, he goes, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, when they came in, right, he was going around the chandelier, which was just a green peanut they painted, if I remember correctly, from commentaries that they were doing. And the special green effect peanut? Guy, yeah, he hates the fucking uh, shot, if I remember correctly. Uh, so uh, they blast there. The chandelier falls. All hell breaks loose. That took, some, you know, he's shoot, going around. He's drinking at the bar. Uh, you know, Ray, give me one hide outside. Ray, poof, Egon, poof, and then Egon just fucking destroys the bar. And I remember my dad laughing so hard. Probably maybe the hardest I've ever seen my father laugh. Definitely as a kid. Uh, of when, whoa, 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 nice shoot, Dude, text. text. And Egon's face is he's just blasting this entire thing to smithereens or whatever. Well, I love it. Was this before or after they down the chandelier? And he goes, I'm sorry, that was my that was my fault. And he goes, Don't worry about it. The table, the table broke, broke his fault. That's 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 coming up now. I think I put <laughs> yeah. that earlier because of the peanut part. But uh yeah, they blast the chandelier down. That was great. So that's a good one. He's up there. <laughs> uh yeah, the table broke the fall. They throw the table outside. You know, obviously the hotel guests are getting there for their midnight buffet or whatever, which they put down there to try to make sense of why this is happening so late at night. Uh I'm sure Mid- this is that how I assure like a- you the room will be ready promptly at time once your guests are here. What you got, Nick, sir? Oh, I just thought I always thought it was like a just an evening banquet thing they were doing. They say something about midnight buffet on the oh, thing, okay, yeah. whatever. But again, like you know, whatever it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, I was I wanted to say real quick. This didn't scare me, but it always stressed me out how much they destroyed the place. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. That's I was like, come on, guys. Come on. Come on. The whole point of it is like it, this. It's you could be better great, at this. Such classic editing too, right? Inside yeah. chaos, outside the guys just desperately trying to like it. And he, he has that line where he's though. like, everything's he going to be fine. Yeah. I assure you'll be ready when your guests arrive. And we cut back indoor and that's when he's like, can't give us help with this table. And they just fucking hurl the thing. And then we <laughs> wait, get wait, wait. I've always wanted to, wanted do, this. to do this. <laughs> and the flowers, the flowers are, are still, still standing. standing. And now I have reference for that kind of funny print that we did. Uh, of the photo that we took. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the because I, I, I had no idea like where it was, <laughs> and I knew we were in some ballroom when we took this photo and photoshopped us into the movie. Uh, and now I understood. It's a great scene. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know uh, they get a containment stream uh, stream on Slimer. They get the other ones. And when I do, I start bringing them down. This is the great line too of like, "Fakeman, shorten your stream. I don't want my face burned off. <gasps> Maybe next time you won't slime a guy with a prosthetron glider." Uh, is, uh, all right. is Greg getting very robotty? A little, he a little pixely for me. Hello, hello, uh, he, hello. He's pixely, but his voice is totally normal oh, okay. on the recording. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the trap. Don't look at the trap. I looked at the trap, Ray. Uh, they get him in there. He's in there. <laughs> you know, Pete Vangman kicks it and does it. Hey. Uh, this is the yeah, the doors throw open though, and this is the big victory celebration for the Ghostbusters, right? Boom, doors open up. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. You saw it. I was gonna say shout outs to the trap. Like what a amazing design in every aspect the fact that it rolls out the fact that like you know that they it's a it's got like a weird foot pedal thing oh i always thought it was really so cool. cool so cool so yeah. cool right uh and uh yeah you know what was it you know what you and you got the smoking trap they explain what's going on another good one here of like all right now and like you know again they've never done this so vankman's coming up on the fly with how much they actually charge to be ghostbusters right, right? and yeah uh, egon's you know stretch but we do have a special on proton charging and storage of the beast and that only costs you one thousand five thousand dollars i had no idea what would be that much i won't pay it oh that's fine we can put it right back in there can't we no, dr no. stan Yes, we can, Dr. Vinkman. No, no. And he cuts into great. And that's when we roll into this Ghostbusters montage, right? That is just fucking so fucking hype. Tim, is this hype as fuck? I mean, is it I, just me? Oh, I fucking love it. That, that, this is the blowjob part, though, right? That's the yeah, one thing. Like, this, yeah. I feel like that does not fit this movie, and it's fucking weird. It doesn't fit the world that they they built. Like, they're they're hanging out with ghosts? And like, well, so. You no, know, he was dreaming about it. Yeah. Well, like, so in canon of what's happening here, the way they show it to you, Tim, Mm-hmm. Is you're meant to believe that the Ghostbusters are working so hard that they're sleeping at the fire station, and that this is a dream da- uh, uh, Ray is having at one point. Got now, it. if you wanted to remove ourselves from canon, it's a deleted scene that yeah. Ray and Winston went up to this uh, upstate New York place that was haunted by this ghost that they see, uh, and that you know they have to stay there overnight in this like bed and breakfast thing that Ray's in the out uh, Ray's in the outfit um, because. Uh, you know, they were, he was like, they were drinking, I think, if I remember correctly, or just hanging out or whatever, because it's like a historical bed and breakfast or some shit like yeah. that. You can and see so, there's a little stanchion. So it looks like he's on a set where there's a stanchion where they put it there and you can't go, cr- you can't cross uh, that, which yeah. I never caught until this last time. Like, so I, I always thought, oh, he's having a dream of being a ship captain or something and he's on a ship, but there's actually like a little, like, it looks, if you pull back and you look at the bottom right hand of the frame and you can see that it's like a museum. Yeah. And, There's too, and so, many, too many elements being added in, in one thing where it's just like we. Oh, dude, no, you, I, I 100% agree with you. It's, it, you know, 
you know exactly what happened. It's that they thought this ghost blowjob was hilarious. And mm-hmm. they're like, we've well, cut that scene. How do we fit it into the movie? Totally. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, insert it here. Where all this other real stuff's happening, right? Where they're on their national news. They're on talk radio. It's Casey great. Kasem's talking about them, right? Like, they're getting bigger and bigger. And it's like, yeah. We'll Larry here. King? Like, yeah. Larry King? Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. That, it just didn't. It, yeah, but in the context. It kind of just of throws film. you back to, like, how. Because Larry King has looked. Old. It looked the same way for about 30 years. And this was like right before he'd looked that way for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I love Fuck, it. That's hilarious. But the, it. Yes. And then, oh, also, then if you just want trivia, of course, then when uh, it, towards the end of the movie here, when they drive back and the containment unit's been blown up and Ray and Winston show up for the first time, like, what happened? That's them coming back from the upstate New York job. Oh, that that's why sense. they're up that's there cool. doing something, why they're off on their own, and like why he comes back looking at the metallurgy and all that. I shit. do, I do respect that though. There's multiple scenes of them running around and and then coming back and doing traps and stuff, and they're slimed a lot, which I thought was sure. interesting. Yeah. I never caught that in, in all the times I watched before. So they get into like some shit. Like there's more ectoplasm happening everywhere they go. Oh sure, yeah, that's you know something that's coming with the ghost, right? Yeah. And there's I, also like you know the idea that like this is one of the few times I think you see them using like different gear setups where you know usually like you know i think harold ramus is always using the pke meter right ray is always in the ecto goggles you see that switched up a bit a few times in some of the shots here is like they're using other different stuff stupid little things that i like um i wanted to say i really like the like old newspapers and magazine covers that they show but it's just a cool throwback that's the the thing you talk about like the newer movies, right? How do people not know that ghosts were around? Where like they're in like the, they're on the cover of like the Atlantic magazine and being like, it's like do, have rights. do you remember the headline? Fuck. It was like civil the new civil like the, it's yeah, it's, about it's ghosts like the political rights. drama and it's like right. dude, ghosts have civil rights. Yeah, they're getting uh, trapped and contained in jail. <laughs> like this is something that, that yeah, this was a cultural phenomenon in the in the movie world or in the world of this movie rather. This was like a worldwide phenomenon that people sure. knew was happening in New York. But you know. Hey man, I don't know. I'm I, I'm interested to see how Afterlife handles it because I agree with you, but then also, would these kids, modern kids, know about something that happened 40 years ago in New York? Granted, it, we're not talking about like the fucking Mets having a great game. We're talking right. about a fucking hundred foot marshmallow man walking in the street. Yeah, Seems yeah, like yeah, yeah, that would have come up, but you know, whatever, whatever. We'll see how we'll see how we'll they see. explain it in November, hopefully, if I can go to a theater one day. Um. So yeah, it's a montage. They're successful. Dana's watching. She's enjoying it. The Ghostbusters are huge. They're not getting any sleep. They're super worn out, which of course leads us to the next scene, which is the introduction of Winston Zeddemore, uh, who shows up with the one ad in the paper, comes in. Uh, uh, Janine interviews him, goes through the whole thing of the litany of like the theory of Atlantis, you know, blah, blah, blah. And if there's a steady cha- paycheck involved with it, I'll believe anything you say. Anything you say. Uh, Ray and Pete walk in exhausted with full traps. Uh, and she's like, this is Winston Zeddemore. He's here about the job. Beautiful. You're hired. You're racing against <laughs> Pete Van. <laughs> right they're like good enough like come on we just need bodies right now welcome aboard gives them the traps uh and that this will lead to the scene with the twinkie and all that stuff but we're not there yet instead there's an interesting edit they put in here to get us back onto uh, dana and pete uh where uh dana is leaving uh, uh her she remember she's she plays the cello right she's leaving uh uh, uh, uh the performance the practice um and is she violin or is she piano She's uh, cello, I think. Yeah, she's cello, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah cello. Yeah, because uh, definitely think. cello in the second one. I remember. And this you dude see her sucks. restringing the cello. At one point, you see her restringing her cello while she's. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. This um, dude does suck. This dude's an yeah. absolute square, and you know Great where he's from. Andy. You know where he's from. It's gonna be a weird kind of thing. RGB. That you probably won't remember. No, this guy. Shockingly, no, Greg. Uh, this guy is from. The movie Black Sheep. He runs the yes. campaign with Tommy Boy's Thank brother, you. or with uh, Chris Farley's brother. Yes, he's the asshole. He's the bad guy, right? Yeah, he's the one that's like, no, it's he's not Matheson. the bad guy. He's just like, stop. Your brother's like fucking yeah. up your campaign. He's that that's guy. That's right. Very weird. That's funny. So Pete Vinkman waits outside. Uh, she comes over. She's excited to talk to him. He's here to update her on a case. He'd like to do it over dinner. She's like, just give me some of it now, right? Uh, you know, he has this thing that clearly Ray wrote down for him. He's never read. <laughs> Zool. <laughs> Talking about Zool, a minion of Gozer. Who's Gozer? Gozer was very big in Samaria very times. very popular with Samaria. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. like, this, this is crazy because the movie goes insane at this point. Like, they kind of just played it super straight where it's like, yeah, there's ghosts here and like it doesn't really matter. They have all this weird tech that they don't really explain and it doesn't matter because they're just using it and like we don't need more context because it's there. This is the first time the movie starts being like, OK, we're going to we need to start building some level yeah, of plot gotta, uh, of like what's actually going on. And it's so ridiculously outlandish, but it really works. 
Because yeah. I like I like yeah, when he asks for is this the scene where he's like he kind of shows her the word she's like Hittite Hittite yeah, yeah Hittite what yeah. is that word Hittite you missed her I also uh, love by the way uh, another touch in the scene that I that I always thought was so I don't know why I, I I vibe with this but I like that he's wearing his work outfit but he's got a like an orange shirt over it like he was a little cold and he just threw it over I just always thought that was so cool when he was that he had the he had the the jumpsuit underneath the jacket. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, I was watching it and I was like, I gotta get that shirt because that's such a cool low low effort cosplay. <laughs> just oh, yeah. having that orange thing with the the pads on my shoulder and the thing is just throw it over my jumpsuit for when I don't want to be f- full geared up. Uh, and then he, that great thing, like again, another Bill Murray improv ride of walking away in that wide shot and the roller skater who's in a very similar thing is spinning and he just spins like him. I love that stupid shit. Um, anyways, yeah, they set up that they're going to have dinner. And he, you know, I'll bring the Rollins guy. We can eat and read. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet you, sir. You're looking much better. You're, not, not, you're better. very pale. Still very pale. <laughs> Fucking Josh McCuga here. Uh, well, I love I love the guys like, the guys like clearly. Who's that? Who's that? Right. He's like, yeah. you know, who is this guy trying to like, what's, what's he? Is he making moves on this person that I'm clearly interested in? And, and she's like, no, no, he's just a friend. And then he just totally blows up the spot. It's like, yeah, I'll yeah, see you totally. on what, Thursday. <laughs> Sorry to get to meet you there. Just nice little flex from Bill Murray on that one. Totally, totally. Uh, We go back now to the firehouse. Uh, This is where we get, to Tim's point, right? We're going to get an explanation now of how all this shit works, right? Uh, It's Winston's arguably probably first day. This is probably all filmed right when he went downstairs because I think Pete's still upstairs. Doesn't matter. Uh, About how the containment unit works. Put it in here. You know, light's green. Trap is clean. Beast is stored here in our custom-made storage facility. Um, back upstairs, uh, Walter Peck shows up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Janine has a funny thing Fucking with uh, Bill Murray before then, right? Of just like, yeah, there's a guy from the EPA in your office. What's he want? EPA, what's he want? I don't know. All I know is that you ha- promised to fi- hire more help and you haven't. Janine, someone with your skill set would have no trouble finding a top flight job in either the hotel services or food industry. I've quit better jobs than this. Ghostbusters, better. what do you want? Uh, we go in there and yes, meet, meet, meet Walter Peck, who, of course, from again, you want to talk about being a dick. And again, understated performance, right? Even after being corrected that it's Dr. Vankman, we'll throughout the rest of the movie call him Mr. Vankman just to piss him off, right? Mm. So it is this whole thing. But so he's actually- talk about this guy here I got for you. Yeah. <laughs> after this film, William Atherton became reviled. People would try to fight him in bars. One day, <laughs> shortly after the film's release, Atherton was walking down a stretch of 7th Avenue in New York City, entirely crowded with school buses, when he heard lots of children shouting at the top of their lungs, Hey, dickless. That's... So good. Well, he didn't do himself any favors because, I mean, obviously, I think he loved playing this part. And I think he loved, he knew he was this character going for, he was basically this character in every movie. But he played this character in Ghostbusters, in Real Genius. He was the principal, same character, though. And then, of course, most famously, he was another exact character in Die Hard. He was the the asshole newscaster. And it's just... It just cemented that William Atherton was the antagonist to whoever the hero was going to be in any 80s movie. If you would like a crossover with another interview series we have done, uh, the one and only Michael Rooker almost didn't have his job in Mallrats because they wanted to give uh, William Atherton that role mm. as Brandy Svenning's father. Oh, that right? worked. But the problem right. was is that William Atherton was like, uh, I don't want to be the comedic bad guy anymore. And they were like, oh, okay, no harm, no foul. And then he went and he was in Biodome as the comedic bad guy. Oh, <laughs> and they were right, like, what Biodome. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Why uh, would you do our movie? You'll do Biodome? <laughs> Another Amen. fact I got about William Atherton is uh, in 2010, he was doing a show with the AV Club and he was talking about the shaving cream scene like towards yeah. the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the the melted marshmallow was extremely heavy. We had the eighth grade science, science test. I went under the bag and I asked, how much shaving cream is in there? And they said, not that much. So I said, well, how much does it weigh? Yeah, it's about 75 pounds, but it's shaving cream. You know the whole thing about 75 pounds of feathers and 75 pounds of lead? They're the same thing. Yeah. Wait, wait. So, so can we figure out what's going to happen with this? So they put some poor stunt guy underneath to show the sissy actor. Okay, nothing's going to happen. So they unleash it and it flattened him. Yeah. <laughs> so they took out half the shavy cream. Then I went out and I dealt with it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's hilarious. Yeah, so yeah. dropping dropping 75 pounds of anything on your shoulders is going to put you on the mat, dude. Yeah, but you got to imagine like only part of it's hitting you. It'll be fine. It was just take the 75 pounds. It's an experience. Jesus. Oh, brutal. One second, Phil. I gotta move some. Uh, Where do we let's leave? Let's fast forward to the end. <laughs> we yeah. got something to do. 
I can keep, I can keep going with the plot. I think. Uh, wait, where, where, what was the last? Oh, so EPA. Uh, they have the scene where they go downstairs, and he's like, he's like, Stop I'd it. like to see your containment. And he goes, Well, you didn't say the magic words. And he's like, What are the magic? What words? is the magic please, words, may Mr. Banks? See your containment unit. And he goes, Why do you want to see my say? Well, I'm just curious. Is what's and obviously we're, it, yeah, it, it's funny. It. This sequence, like obviously that they're grounding this somewhat in in the real world to try to make this as believable as possible, um, because very quickly people just kind of. Uh, agree that yes ghosts exist and they are haunting and stuff like that and i love that i hadn't even thought of like the repercussions of being like and where are you storing these ghosts well that's what's and being that's like what's so oh fuck yeah that's kind of like in the real world that's a dangerous thing i don't know that's I, a good I, question I, I love that too right and it's 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 such a we just did a startup oh god we have to have this like we yeah, didn't even yep. think about this like insurance <laughs> it's uh, still real yeah it's so funny it's it's it, it hits home so, yeah, we have the whole escalation here with uh, Walter Peck, right? And he won't show him down there. And he's like, well, I'll come back with a warrant. You come back with a warrant. I'll get, I'll sue your ass for wrongful prosecution. You can have it your way, Mr. Hankman. Uh, and so, you know, he gets thrown out of there. We go back downstairs where we get the famous Twinkie scene, right? Uh, where it's uh, Ray, Winston, and Egon all having a cigarette right around the containment unit and all the high voltage shit. Just chilling out being bros, right? Dude, uh, he like lights Winston's cigarette too, which is great. Oh, yeah. It's not even like yeah, there's yeah, one. Yeah, he's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. oh, have, yeah, let's have cigarettes. And so, yeah, it's the whole thing of like you know uh, if this normal size twinkie is what normal is for spiritual energy in new york the twinkie from today would be you know whatever it is 36 feet long and approximately 600 pounds or whatever the fuck it is that's a big twinkie uh, that's a big twinkie <laughs> a big twinkie uh <laughs> you know uh Vinkman comes down he's like i just had a visit from a, a, a visit from the epa uh how's the grid holding up not well tell him about the twinkie what about what the about Twinkie? The Twinkie? <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, this is for me watching last night where I was like, we jump back and we're going back to Dana's apartment. And I was like, oh, fuck, we're hauling. I forget how fast this movie mm -hmm. can move, right? Or whatever, where it's like, we're getting the crazy lightning upstairs, the purple lightning around uh, the building here. Uh, we get the terror dogs, toes breaking through, right? And then it's uh, Dana walking back to her apartment, Lewis stopping her because he's having his party, right? You're missing a killer a classic party. Classic party. <laughs> yeah. So I love it. Like for the two seconds that she's walking right in front of his door, she's like trying, trying to, to see. Oh, and he's like yeah. sitting there, like waiting for it. You've all had that neighbor, right? That's gonna fucking. You're, I don't want to see this person. Fuck, they're there. Uh, she breaks the news, of course, that she made a date, and he has that really genuine, like, you made a date, and then he's like all right you can bring them she's like all right we'll try to stop by great i'll tell everybody he goes can't get it somebody let me in uh dana goes into her apartment uh she's coming back from workout she's trying to get ready for her date with vankman uh the phone rings it's her mother and it's like i've never heard a more like uh spot on like call with your parents when you're in a hurry like yeah i won't i will mom i have to <laughs> like i have to go i have a date yeah. uh no no one you know he's a ghostbuster those guys on TV. Those guys right? on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, like, you know, I'm not this guy or whatever, but like in terms of, I think, you know, Ghostbusters for the most part is a lot of wides, is a lot of, the mm -hmm. camera is planted. I really do love while they're doing this, they do a great spin around her where she's mm -hmm. having the conversation, the camera spins and it ends like, all right, bye, but love to dad, bye, and hangs up and she has that, whoo, and like you see the kitchen door there with the light around it, right? And then she mm -hmm. does that like slow look, and you see the hand coming through it and twisting so on it. Like, oh fuck! Or shit, whatever. And then poof, the hand comes up, grabs her, slams her down. Another hand up here, slams her. The, uh, Kevin, I will give you this one scared me as a kid. This, this one of like the monster coming up and grabbing her and then pulling her in there, the door slamming shut, and us being like, "Well, what the fuck just happened in there?" Right? Yeah. Um, because they couldn't it, touch you before this, you know what I mean? They yeah, exactly. They like they did a great job of establishing ghosts not being scared or not being able to hurt you, right? They, they can slime you. That was it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, now we go upstairs, we see the terror dogs are gone from the thing. Uh, we stay here, we stay here, <laughs> we stay here. We go down back to uh, uh, the Lewis Tully uh, part, party, uh, party, right? right? Yeah, where he's going around saying everybody hide everybody. Do you have the do you have aspirin? I got the acetocel and it's the g generic. I can get 600 tablets for the price of three. Uh, <laughs> This that the is flu the salmon from Nova Scotia. I got about you know only fourteen dollars after taxes. That's why I invited clients instead of friends. I'm throwing this whole thing as a promotional expense. Goes around that one woman wants to leave. He's like, let's dance. He started dancing for two seconds. The doorbell rings. Ted and Ned, everybody. This is Ted and Ned Fleming. And Ted's got a small receivership, and Ned's drawing a salary from a deferred bonus. It's like walking in and having all your financial shit done or whatever. They give him his coat. I'm sorry, Nick. You want to jump on? I was gonna say I'm just I'm rewatching this scene right now because I didn't want to mistake about this it's all one shot yeah it's so it's so well done and and it's just again to talk about like you talk about a lot of why yeah. a lot of the reason why 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 you see a lot of comedies like 
cutting into close-ups is so that you can cut the comedy for the mm -hmm. edit because you don't necessarily maybe the actor's not giving the performance or you need to re retime him and stuff like this but this movie is amazing to just have a lot of these just be mediums and wide shots and just let rick moranis walk around fucking crush and it. do his fucking thing and put it's his thing so down and this good. is awesome yeah the, I mean, the whole thing, it, like, he's selling it as, like, oh, it's an expense thing. Like, I, got, yeah. I that's why I'm, I book clients, not friends. It's like, ah, oh, you nailed this role. You nailed this character 100%. Yeah. Uh, even though you don't your own taxes. Well, I remember when he tells uh, Dana that, right? When he, even though you do your own taxes, which you shouldn't do. Shouldn't uh, do. He throws the things in there. There's a tear dog in the bed that he doesn't see. The stuff goes over, shuts the door. Anybody want to play part cheesy? There's the growl. Oh, okay, oh. who brought the dog? You gloss <laughs> past the, gloss past the best. Passed. No. Rick Moranis moment, where she's like, "Lewis, I'm leaving," and he goes, "No, no, 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 no. Maybe if you start, we start dancing. Everyone will start dancing." She goes, "Okay, okay," <laughs> <laughs> and he just gets into it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do Terror dog explodes, busts through the table. Everybody's freaked out and done it. Lewis is freaking out. Uh, he runs out into the hallway, runs to the elevator, hits the door. Terror dog bursts through his door. The old lady comes out for two seconds whoa, and shuts the door. <laughs> uh, he comes down, and now here's where the, we'll do the Easter egg. All right. He comes down. He runs out. Somebody have this bear. This is my apartment. Help. He runs. He hops over the thing, runs into Central Park. Uh, we cut back to the doorman and the guys there. The doorman and the guys there. A bear in his apartment? And then he gets knocked down as the terror dog runs out. Right. Remember that doorman. That's what I'll say right now. Remember that doorman, okay. right? Okay. I'm uh, at it right now. That uh, we explode over. You know, it's him running through the thing. I'm bringing this, bring this up the next tenor, tenants meeting. There's not supposed to be, uh, you know, pets in the apartment. Um, runs the tavern on the green like we've talked about. He bangs. He's oh, somebody got it. He can't get in any of the doors, right? And he runs the glass. Finally, bangs. Goes, somebody let me in. Uh, nobody helps him or whatever. Uh, and then yeah, the terror dog. Nice pooch. Maybe I got a milk bone. Uh, and then blah, and he puts himself to the glass and slides down. Everybody stops to look, then goes back to eating. Just totally like whatever. Fuck this guy. He God bless me. He's not good enough to be on Tavern on the Green. Why would I? Why? Why would I care about him? Um. From then we go back to the apartment, right? Uh, it or the building. It's uh, Pete Venkman walking up with flowers and walking into the building. One of my favorite Ghostbuster stories, of course, is we talk about sets and things like that, right? Is they tried to film as much as they could in New York, obviously, ex externally. When Lewis runs out of the apartment and the doorman gets knocked down, that is in New York. When they come back with Pete Venkman, the doors are blown apart because of the terror dog. That's a set uh, in L.A. or whatever. Mm. They, the doorman is not the same doorman, but they were able to cast a dude that looks almost exactly like the fucking doorman. Like it's ridiculous to me that there's this dude there that like is, I mean, like you look at it and you can see it but like you who's watching the fucking doorman like I only yeah. know it from commentary tracks or whatever that like that's what happened uh, I think it's stupid or whatever what that's happened fun. some Do moron you... brought a cougar to a party and the thing went to the circ <laughs> cougar <laughs> see, I like how the story evolved from a bear to a cougar right? <laughs> <laughs> a cougar to a party the thing went to a cougar to a party because a cougar is just believable enough that someone could bring a cougar up to a party in New York stupid idiots yeah. Uh, anybody else got something? Sorry, I thought somebody else said something. Mm -mm. No, okay. Uh, so Pete goes on up, and it's the uh, you know there the chaos in Dana's hallway. Walks down, knocks on the door. Uh, the door opens, and it's this dreamy music or whatever. And Dana now in full Zool, Zool apparel, right? She's been possessed. Uh, are you the key master? No. She slams the door in his face. <laughs> knocks again. Are you the key master? Yes, I'm one of his friend. I'm his friend. He told me to meet me here. I'm Zula. And then we get into the whole thing, right? Of I'm Zula. Right? What are we up to today, Zuli? Preparing for the coming of Gozer. And we go through the whole thing, right? And again, another, I think, a great performance from uh, Sigourney Weaver, right? Obviously, as she gets to totally go wild in this movie where she's been a very, the straight person, right? Of just like, whatever I'm up, I'm up for here. Here's where she gets to ride around. And again, like, you want to talk about like, a movie not made for kids, but like kids would never know. Because again, if the comedy is what they're doing is all, you know, uh, dialogue based, when she's like, you know, I want you inside me. Why would I ever think anything about that? Right? Like, oh, it sounds like it's you already got one. You already have too many people in there, right? Take me now, sub creature. Like all these fucking things that are, you know, I make it a rule never to get involved with possessed people. And she what kisses, is, like, well, I'm more than a guideline than a rule. Yeah, and like, and she's like, she pulls him down. Right, and I forget what she says to him, but it's the mo it's the moment he breaks and he goes, "Okay, no, no, I can't, I can't do it." <laughs> He's like, "All right, no, 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 I can't do this." I'm yeah, really yeah. glad that that's the direction they chose to take with it because I could have sworn Bill Murray was going to be all about it. I thought he was going to be the fool that fell for it and wasn't was just like not aware and like obviously like she's possessed, but he just kind of like chose to ignore either chose to ignore it or 
I mean, sure. was just like Point too kind of overwhelmed by all of it. Yeah. And I just love the way he played all of this. It was so I also good. love that you see yeah. him when it cuts back to him in the later scene, checking her pulse and, and like, he's actually has some level of knowledge of science. Oh yeah. And, like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, well, yeah I mean, he yeah. had the, he knocked her up with, or knocked her up. He doped her up with a Thorazine, right? Or right. whatever it was. Knock her she's out. like, she's knocked out with like 200, 600, 300 yeah. CCs or whatever, which I thought uh, was actually kind of a nice touch. Like, Oh, he is competent. He just chooses not to be because right. yeah. he's, he's likes the shortcuts. It's another moment as a kid that freaked me out. All of this, it was very intense. And, 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 and had, no yeah, the levitating, now. but oh, also like man. her, like trying to fuck him. That was I mean, <laughs> I mean, like she's possessed, and that's not that this seems wrong. And so, yeah, that's the whole thing. We've kind of touched on all the elements of here, right? Of like, yeah, she, she does the whole uh, levitating, rotating, <laughs> like when she's, she roars at him or whatever, right? And like, there is no Dana, only Zool. Oh, Zooli, you old nutball. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Um. Uh. Well. Yeah. And that's the cut. Oh, we cut, and then it's uh Lewis Tully now. Uh. Vince Clothor, uh, the uh, the key master. Uh. I did not spell, say Vince Clothor, and I still can't say it right. But you know what I'm, I'm saying. Uh. He's Vince. Uh. They're running out there, and uh, uh. Oh yeah, he's running around. Uh. Asking everybody if they're the gatekeeper. He's the key master, right? And so eventually he runs up to the horse. <laughs> are you? Are you? I'm the key master. Are you the gatekeeper? And he, the guy, the the guy who drives the horse, like, hey, buddy, he just he pulls the cart. I make the deals. And he gr- does the red eye growl thing at him. Uh, wait for the sign. Then all prisoners will be released. You will perish in flames. You will perish. And he fucking kicks over the ladies, the homeless ladies' cans. What an asshole. <laughs> He's so good in this role. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Because even uh, like even possessed, he's still an idiot, you know. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, from there, it's the cops have picked up Vince, or, or and they're gonna bring him over to uh, uh, Vince, Vin, Vince, Vince. Uh, uh, they're gonna bring him over to the Ghostbusters. Uh, you know, she knock, knocks on the door. Janine opens it, picking up or dropping off, <laughs> dropping off. Comes out. You know, I, I don't want to send him to Bellevue, and I don't want to put him in lockup. And I know you guys are into this kind of thing. Egon uh, PKE sweeps him. It goes. It buries the needle. Goes off the chart or whatever. Um, so he's like, you better bring him in. Uh, they bring him up. This is when we get the cool throwback to the Dana thing, right? Where we see the TV where they have the headset on uh, Vins or whatever, and uh, we go over there and it's the terror dog on the screen. It's not uh, like when Sigourney Weaver got tested earlier, it was her on the screen. Uh, this time it's the terror dog and its head moving in the same rhythm, uh, sa- doing the same motions. Uh, uh Lewis Tully's doing that's super cool. Awesome. Uh, you know, Egon keeps talking to him. You know, I'm Vince Clothor, blah, blah, blah. He says, he says he's Lewis Tully, Central Park West. Uh, you know, then we go into more like the, you know, they'll choose the form of the destructor. You know, many slores, know, or many whatever know what it was like to be ro- roasted in the s- belly slore. of a slore that day, I can tell you. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so he keeps going on. And eventually, yeah, you know, Jeannie's like, Egon, can I talk to you? Uh, and he's like, I've, there's something, again, understated. There's something very strange about this man. <laughs> and Egon looks out of his eye like, oh, yeah, yeah, no shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've picked up on that. But Jeannie's like, you know, I'm usually very psychic about this kind of thing. And I got a horrible feeling you're going to die phone rings uh vince freaks out they grab it answer it i'm gonna keep calling it vince uh grabs it brings it over and you know it's it's pete this is the conversation we're talking about earlier right i think we get get her a guest a guest spot on wild kingdom um you know I, she says she's the gatekeeper does that mean anything to you uh yeah and maybe i just met the key master uh and, and this is when uh lewis tell you drinking the water well, out that was before the- she's like she's like do you want some coffee and he's like do i he's like yes have yes, some, have some. Yes, have some. Fucking <laughs> weird as shit. And he's like, well, and so Pete's like, we got to get these two together. And Egon's like, I think that'd be extraordinarily bad. bad. Uh, and he's like, all right, cool. Then I'm going to head over there in a little bit and I'll see you. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this is the thing, yeah, where he checks her pulse, but then he kisses her like on the hand and then on the collarbone. Yeah. It's like, ah, right. And it's like, again, I, for the time, it's like totally that thing of like, it's Bill Murray. And also, it's a foregone conclusion these two are going to end up together because that's what every fucking movie does. But it's like, now you're like, oh, God, like, what that a weird wouldn't, thing yeah, that wouldn't do. work. That wouldn't sweep the name. Uh, from here, though, we get the scene I was talking about earlier. Uh, it's Winston and Ray driving back from the thing that didn't happen, and Ray's pouring over the plans for the building, right? And uh, we'll get into this in the cop thing a little bit, but he's basically going over the fact that, hey, dude, this fucking building's super weird. Nobody made it like this. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Winston asks, Do you believe in God? And Ray's like, Never met the guy, but I do remember Revelations, you know, Judgment Day pitches the whole thing. And uh, in, the, in, in Winston's like, Yeah, I love God's style. And Ray's like, 
Well, every, you know, every uh, 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 religion has. Oh, sorry, Nick, I didn't see your hand up. Well, I was going to say they just I think it's now he's talking about the metal. And he's like, this is the kind of stuff they use to like search for deep pull, like pulsars. I thought that was in. The, I thought space. I thought that was the exposition we get in the the police. It uh, might it might be that. Yeah, it might yeah. be. It might be. Uh, but it doesn't matter either way. We know where we're going. Uh, it, it, every ancient religion has its own myth about the end of the world. And and uh, uh, Ernie Hudson, uh, Winston scoffs and is like, myth? Did you ever think that the reason we're so busy right now and there's so many ghosts is that the dead are rising from the grave and that this is Judgment Day? And it's like a great thing of Ray, like, all right, let's listen to uh, uh, the radio, right? Good idea. And this is when we get the one shot of the Ecto-1 with the uh, uh, Twin Towers bridge. as they go across the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's early morning uh, as they're coming home from this late night thing. Uh, this is when EPA shows up with the cops and Con Ed uh, to cut the power and everything else to so they walk in. Uh, Janine stops them, right? And is like, I've, I've seen TV. You can't come in here without a warrant or a writ or a search warrant. Or something. And she, he's like, he has like the list of all the things. Cease and desist all commerce. He's a ban of public utilities. And there's another one of those like, ah, fuck. You got us. <laughs> you actually know what you're talking about. Uh, they go downstairs. Uh, Egon's down there with Lewis. Uh, they start, you know, telling him to shut all this shit off. And he's like, we won't be held responsible. You will be held responsible. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Vankman shows up. He comes down. Eddie's officer. He tries to de-escalate, but he can't because obviously Peck already hates him. And so it's this whole thing. And, uh, you know, the guy's like, uh, the Con Ed guy's like, uh, you know, I've never seen something like this. I don't care what you've seen before. Uh, Vankman touches the cop and the cops like don't touch me and then peck's like you can shoot him if you do that you do your job pencil neck don't tell me how to do mine it's like damn this is escalating quickly for this Very cop doesn't yeah. Here. Yeah. uh but yeah they you know eventually the guy goes over there to turn it off egon does the great like like when he walks away from yeah him, like, this is we really cool to touch out of here you know what i mean and the dude throws way, the they, switch. Oh, sorry, go ahead. They, I never noticed before, but they fucking nobody gives a shit about Lewis Tully. They just oh, no. leave him, and he's standing next to the thing with the Con Ed guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, totally. Uh, so the dude turns it off, right? And then yeah, all hell starts breaking loose. And the red lights flashing, the bricks start going. Uh, uh, Lewis Tully Vins is like super into it. Uh, you know, we have been getting we get a shot of Dana Barrett uh, as Zool, obviously sitting there. I hyperventilated in bed like we left her, and then her eyes snap open when the top of the fire station blows off and the crazy energy shoots out. Everybody runs out. There's shit falling. Uh, all hell is breaking loose, right? Uh, we see the ghosts or the spirits or the energy all shoot out. Uh, there's a great thing of, you know, everybody's there's smoke and there's this and there's that. And Ecto one rolls up and uh, Ray and Winston get out and they're like, fuck. And then Vince has that, or Vince has a, or Lewis has that great line, right? Of like, it's this this is it this is the sign and andy Foss is like yeah it's a sign all right going out, going of, out business. of business <laughs> and so this is when he's able to slip off uh lewis tully right uh the ghostbusters reunite all four of them what happened uh you know they turned off the protection grid that's bad right and ray's like yeah that's bad uh then they do the thing of like wait where's where's the where's the key master the key master they all panic trying to find him they run to the cops and peck and peck's like you know i want you to arrest these men they're in violent criminal violence violation of the environmental protection area. Oh, and then and you know this is this explosion is a direct uh, direct result of it your mother and then we get the you know cut off is that that's all fun and it's all the please please i love and we see that obviously in the, in the afterlife trailer right this is where we get the wisps yeah that cool effect of all the ghosts just launching and being and going all over new york and then of course it cuts over to that shot like dana wakes up right like, yeah. she's like, ha, 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 ha. and then I, what I think is the coolest shot in the whole fucking movie as she slowly walks over to the window to look outside and sees all the ghosts. And then it's that slow mo shot of it just exploding Whoa. outward. And I don't know how the hell they got this. I, mean, I don't know how many takes it must take, but the, the dust clears and it's like blowing. And it's just as it clears, you see her peering laser right through it. So good. And it's so rad. And this is the montage you have, you know, the subway ghost, the taxi ghost, Slimer with the hot dogs. Like, you know, this is uh, all the ghosts are back in New York. New York's in under siege. Uh, we get Lewis Tully walking around staring at the sky the whole time, right? Because he's following the ghosts, theoretically. Uh, it's chaos. So. It is chaos. It dogs is and chaos. cats living together. Mass hysteria. Uh, from there, we go to the police station. Uh, the Ghostbusters are in lockup alongside all the other deviants of New York, right? <laughs> but they let the Ghostbusters keep all their plans for this building. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah, this seems weird. The them being uh, arrested, it's like they really are just allowed to like <laughs> make this plan just in front of everybody. But all right, you know what? Whatever. Maybe the cops. I mean, it's Carl Winslow, right? It's it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, Reginald Vol Johnson. Which yeah, is exactly. Hilarious in this. Uh, and so uh, whether it's the Die Hard universe or whether it's uh, the Family Matters universe, we'll never know. Never know. Uh, 
but yeah, they go over the things here, right? And they're going back over. The, in, this is what you're talking about, like, uh, you know, the metallurgy of this, and like, uh, it's a, it's for finding, you know, sonar in deep space or whatever. And like, basically, this is meant to be like to attract all spiritual energy to this one thing. And there's, it's obviously way funnier, better presented here because it is the whole like Ray for a second pretend I don't know anything about metallurgy, engineering, quantum physics. What is going on? You never studied. <laughs> And this is where they lay it out, of course, right? Uh, that this is this antenna. This is the thing. She lives in Spook Central. Uh, there's the thing I like. My, your girlfriend. She's not my girlfriend. You know, I just find her fascinating because she sleeps above the covers. Four feet above the covers. She barks. She jewels. Uh, and this is where they lay out things that will all be very important for Ghostbusters Afterlife. And we're important for Ghostbusters the video game well as you play. But we hear about Evo Shandor, right? Uh, the architect of this building, but also a doctor who performed a lot of unnecessary surgeries. Uh, he was a big Gozer worshiper. Uh, he had a secret cult of gozer worshippers after uh world war one was it after world war uh you know he decided that uh society was too sick to be uh, allowed to survive that it was filled with deviants and this is when they're like look around like oh we're in jail with all these people who are you know people that are like exactly what he's talking about um so he built this thing, uh, you know, made the top of it. They would do rituals meant to bring about the end of the world. And now it looks like it actually might happen. So be good. For goodness sake. Whoa, Whoa. Somebody's coming. And Bill Murray doing his like lounge singing from SNL, right? As he walks around talking to everybody and like. Uh, the, I like the, I like as everyone's everyone starts because Diane Aykroyd so good at this. Everyone starts to creep in. And Bill Murray's like, you got that? <laughs> Every, yeah. Whatever you got so far, whatever he says. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so this is, you know, uh, uh, Winston's like, are we really supposed to go in front of a federal judge and say that some moldy Babylonian god is coming back to, to destroy New York? Sumerian, big difference. I got to get my own lawyer. And this is when the mayor. Uh, oh, yeah, don't take it. No offense, guys, but I'm going to get my own lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is when uh, 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 Reginald Bell Johnson shows up and says, Ghostbusters, mayor wants to talk to you. All right, I'll go. The mayor wants to rap with me. Uh, so they leave to go talk to the mayor. Uh, from here, we go back to the apartment building. Uh, all hell's breaking loose. Uh, there's been an explosion up top. Yeah, uh, all hell's breaking loose. They're freaking out on the ground. Um, Keymaster and Gatekeeper get together. Uh, Louis Tully walks on in there. Uh, are you the, are you, I'm the Keymaster, you're the Gatekeeper, whatever they say. Uh, and then she, you know, uh, Dana being Dom in this relationship grabs him, makes out with him, like does like the sweeping dip, make out. Then they walk to a staircase that is behind the fridge. Like, you know, why was the fridge important? It was important because this is the way to get to the sacrificial, um, you know, uh, secret part where they do the ritual or whatever. Cool they go up there. Design. I love the production design of all this stuff. Like the way that the stairs look and just like even the way they talk about it. I'm just like, yeah, let's let's go up these fucking stairs. It's like where are these stairs it was going? really, really cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, before that, though, yeah, we go back to the mayor's office where, uh, you know, the Ghostbusters are Wait, real in. quick. Yeah, please. That wide shot of it, like it blown, blown the Dana's apartment blown up. Yeah. And like it looks so cool to have that giant missing chunk of the wall. The, the also like when he opens the door and her laying there, it's just so freaky. That's yeah. Um, so now we're in the mayor's office. Uh, it's you know, Defcon four, if that's high. Uh, and they're over there doing I, Kevin. What is it? Defcon one's the worst, or Defcon five's the worst? Mm. Thanks, Kev. Uh, everybody's freaking out. They got maps, they got like the you got the little like epicenter from the firehouse going out and talking about all the shit. And they're all freaking out. Uh, Ghostbusters here. All right, Ghostbusters, they come in. Where's the, where's Peck? Uh, I'm Walter Peck, and I'm prepared to make it. They start doing the bickering, you know, and the whole thing. And this is the you know, the whole thing of like, everything was fine until a dickless here shut off our protection grid. And it turns, is this true? It is. This man has no dick. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> honestly, to me, funniest fucking part of the movie. Like that yeah, hit yeah, me the so delivery hard. delivery was so good on that. Yeah. And uh, so also, it's this idea of, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I looked into it. Defcon 1 is the worst, uh, right? critical. Okay. Defcon 5, low. Okay, great. Oh, so it's opposite of hurricanes. Opposite, we think. Rock me like a Defcon 1. And tornadoes, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're there now and they're having their conversation, figuring out, oh, Peck's whole thing is like, these are, these men are consummate so snowball artists. You know, they use sense and nerve inhibiting gas to make you think you're seeing, them. then they show up with a fake electronic light show. And then the fireman's like, what I know is that nothing I saw there was, a, you know, a light show. I've seen every form of combustion known to man. That was no light show. Uh, the one guy is like, the walls, the, the walls in the 53rd precinct were bleeding. <laughs> like, how do you explain that? 
Um, and so then finally in the middle of all this bickering, uh, his eminence, like the Bishop or Cardinal or whatever shows up, Mike, Mike shows up. Right. And there's a moment of like, uh, the mayor kisses his hand and then he's like, Lenny, how are you? Mike. And he slaps some more. I mean, a real jam here or whatever. And like, you know, Mike, the church won't take a stance. I think it's a sign from God, but don't quote me on that. That's good. Good advice. Mike, <laughs> whatever Bakeman says. In this, in, in, you know. I know he, I like that he calls him Mike. It's good advice, Mike. Totally. Right. <laughs> And so, you know, Mayor eventually is like, so, you know, like, what's going on there? Like, you know, it's going to be real wrath of God stuff, you know, Old Testament stuff. And this is the whole thing. 40 years of darkness, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. He's like, I'm not going to call a press conference to tell everybody to pray, you know, and, blah, blah. and they go around the bend on this. And he's like, you know, so what, what do you want? You know, what do you want from what do you want from me? Or what do you, or not? Yeah, that's the end of this or whatever, right? But he's like, so you know you know it's the whole thing it's the great line right like, okay. oh, anyway, what if you're wrong <laughs> if wrong nothing happens i was trying to get to that thinking that was happening <laughs> if i'm wrong if we're wrong nothing happens we go to jail peacefully quietly we'll enjoy it but if i'm right lenny you will save the lives of millions of registered <laughs> voters great lenny, line yeah so to. good dude and like lenny. it's like i can't believe you're actually thinking about listening to this man get him out of here i'm yeah, gonna I'm miss gonna, you yeah, i'm gonna i'm gonna send him a nice fruit basket fruit i'll ask you bank, bank man, i'll fix you then the guy the mayor goes so what do you need from me cut to the national guard all the police right uh in this like uh parade receiving line for the ghostbusters as we go all the way back to find the ecto one and uh bill murray lean out and go all right let's run some red lights um so now it's back to uh well now it's a like, saving the day saving the day i like i like that uh people talk about this and they talk about this specific scene of being like like at the time, you know, like Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd were freaking huge in, in, in New York because of SNL. And this was like their town. And like people were coming out as extras that were like, because all these extras were like people, right? Like we're actually watching, watching them film. And Ivan Reitman's like, fuck it, just you're in. Like we need some of <laughs> you guys for this stuff. And so they were just like, they, they talk about the energy on set when they would come back to New York and film there and how these guys were sure. like local heroes. It was super cool. Every well, time you've ever sang that song and done the, I always think you're doing Thriller by Michael Jackson. It sounds very, very similar. Yeah. Dun, dun, yeah. I want to sing it tonight. The revelation, man. Like, I was saying this on a show a couple days ago, but like this, this moment of that song in this movie, like I, I, they nailed it. Greg and Nick, the, 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 <laughs> they got the sounds right. Job, and when, once it started playing, I'm like, okay, this is it. This is the scene. And it's a dope ass scene. You can feel that energy you're talking about, though, right? It's a great okay. scene. When, when, when they get out, so the Ecto-1 rolls up, right? And when Bill Murray gets out and he is shaking hands and stuff, he's he's Bill Murray in that scene. He's oh, not, yeah, 100%. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's so great about it. This is and, also, and, and also not Jeremy and Extra in all of this. Yeah, go ahead. And also, I just love the this sort of um, very authentic looks that Dan Aykroyd is giving. Like, he doesn't want to look super stoked, but he's like, this Come is on, pretty dude. cool. You know, yeah. like, it's yeah. great. This sequence is so good. Could you fucking imagine... You're a New Yorker and you're like, oh, I hear that Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and like Ivan Ryan and Harold Ramos are filming a movie around the corner. Let's go check it out. And you just happen to pop by and be in a shot yeah, and it's Ghostbusters. Like you wouldn't have any, you'd be like, why are they dressed like that? And what's on their back? And like, what's this ghost logo? I think so about it all the cool. time with like the, in the Columbia University stuff. Like every yeah. scene, if you want to, you watch the background, you can see where they've shut down the streets and people are just milling about and they're being like, what the fuck is going on with that? You know what I mean? Similar to like the montage thing when the one newscaster, I don't know who he is, I'm sorry, but he's like, my grandmother used to tell a story about a spectral locomotive that rocketed past the farm. There's a guy who stops behind it and is like adjusting his beard. Like yeah. he's not, he's not an extra. Yeah. He's, he's got like, they talk in the documentary. Like that's just a guy. And so yeah. imagine being that guy. You're yeah, like, like oh, they're doing a news report here. Weird. Then you're in the biggest comedy of all time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone in wearing... his life must have been like, was that Rob? Was Rob yeah. in Ghostbusters? <laughs> and you know it's Rob because he's wearing denim on denim. He's yeah, got yeah, the whole Canadian Rob. tuxedo. Yeah. Anyways, back to the plot. I saw. I'm sorry, everybody. I, uh, you know, we get the might have to put a little overtime in on this one. As they get there, you know, things start to shift. It starts to get a little bit more serious. The building starts to fight back. It shakes. Stuff falls. They dodge it. Uh, the the uh, road itself goes all crazy and eats them. But they get back out. And there's that line that's seared into my brain from the. It's the you know wild call from the extra of like there they are when they cut when it comes out and when they all come out. I don't know why it's like resonates so much. It's hype as shit, dude. There they are. We've uh, seen uh, though, like it definitely looks like they died, right? Oh yeah, yeah. it's a weird scene for sure, but like yeah. I, I appreciate it. Like it, it was worth like, the worth the bit. 
it's back to you know how you were talking about like oh man it's funny that the key master gets locked out every time and nobody we, that that joke never gets called attention to right like in the commentary like when you listen to it when we get to the very end of the movie and they you know cross the streams and blow everything up and like you look at that explosion like they were very clear of like yeah we wanted the explosion to be so big that there's no reason anyone would ever possibly survive it but we survive it just for laughs and it's like it's like such a thing of like you watch that movie like now completely remind you're like what the fuck why is this explosion so intense and all yeah. they are is covered in marshmallow which wouldn't even make sense with the way it would blow back they were just like we thought it was funny so we did it that way like all right mm. cool, whatever all right. Man, you made a movie it was great like, there, there's a wide shot that they do after the police car goes in and I swear to God you can see like their arms and it they looks crushed. like they've been crushed <laughs> and it's like what that's a weird inclusion. But they have this giant celebration rallying moment, right? They survive the thing. Every cheer is running. All right, they want to play rough? Let's play rough. They do the little Ghostbusters hand thing. Then they run in, and then it's all that momentum is gone. And it's that it's the shot of the staircase going up and the Just boom. boom. Soul crushing boom. shot. Oh, <laughs> the slow ass the music. I'm like, where are we? Hilarious. So many all right, when we get to 20, tell me. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, from there we get uh, uh, a check in with uh, uh, the uh, key master and uh, uh, the gatekeeper. Uh, they are there on the altar. Uh, his belt's undone. They had some sex there. You know what I mean? It's uh, something that, again, it, cutting room floor, there is a deleted scene af after they get saved where uh, they get reunited. He's like, oh, I can't believe we went through that. And he's like, by the way, did we? And she goes, no, Lewis. And he's like, I'm pretty sure. And she just goes, no. Lewis and walks no. away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, uh, you know, they go up and get into position into their little like pr prayer poses or whatever, or get ready to be in their prayer poses. Uh, Ghostbusters uh, arrive on the right floor. Uh, Egon has the line, Art Deco, very nice. <laughs> They're all exhausted and ready to die. That's what he says. <laughs> so good. Uh, they go down, they go into Dana's apartment. The door falls down. They walk in. You know, it is a look around. Where do these stairs go? They go up. And then he's like, and he, Vankman leaves, and then there's the one lightning bolt. And he's like, all right, you go. Uh, you, I'll, I'll, you go ahead. <laughs> you go ahead. He, he has all three of the other Ghostbusters go up before him. Uh, as they approach, uh, you know, we see it with uh, the gatekeeper and uh, the key master. Uh, and then the, the the altar between them and the crazy uh, doorway. They put up their hands. Purple lightning comes down to them. It makes like a triangle similar to what we saw in the fridge. It, their energy opens the giant two swinging doors or whatever. Ghostbusters walk up to see all this happen and then see uh, them get turned into terror dogs. Uh, they run up into their position. Vankman has a great line of like, okay, so... She's a dog. <laughs> like that's it. We're accepting it. We're not going to talk about it. Let's keep moving with the, goal, the the thing that's happening here. Beast, before she turns into a dog, we get some solid shaking from Sigourney Weave, Weaver, and let me tell you, as a kid, terrifying. Sure. This, this is terrifying. Sure. Yeah, I understand that. I, I get that 100. Um, Ghostbusters then come over, and then you're on again. Like I don't know if you have it anymore, Tim, but like what at the time was the largest soundstage in the history of movies. Oh, I didn't see anything about that. That's cool like, as hell though. Like the stairs and all this shit. Like it was such a big deal that for, I, I even like before commentaries and shit like that, there's so much of it. There's a great photo of Chevy Chase and Bill Murray on the steps doing like a stupid, like musical looking number kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there's a, uh, one of the facts is the, the Ghostbusters song became such a big hit. And in the music video, there's a ton of celebrity cameos, inc including, Chevy Chase and stuff. Of course, you had to have him back then. You know what I mean? Real team player, Nick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they <laughs> walk over there. Uh, the door is open, and Gozer the Gozerian comes out, right? Uh, this uh, was, For so many people, both children and adults alike, I've had it so many times where people thought it was Annie Potts. They thought it was Janine. They're confused why these characters look so much alike or whatever. It is not. It is Gozer the Gozerian. Uh, this crazy flat top, red eyes, and high heels. Why not? Yeah. And it, it, we have the whole thing of like, it's a girl. It's whatever it wants to be. Uh, they come out and have the conversation, right? Uh, it, it, like somebody should talk to it again or whatever. Go get her, Ray. <laughs> Another fun, if you want, like, you know, obviously I know if you're watching this this deeply, you know how much Ghostbusters has influenced my life. One of my favorite things uh, that I like to think in my little ways of being able to pay homage to anything in my uh, trending gamer speech uh, at one point, I go, I am a duly elected representative of you, the gamers. That's directly from here, mm -hmm. where Ray gets up and says he's a duly record on behalf of the city, county, and state of New York. Next time, <laughs> he's a Next time you one, I want you to be like, goes with the Gozerian. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gozer listens to Ray's entire speech, right? And then goes, are you a god? 
And he looks back at the guys and they go, and he goes, what? No? Then die. die. Spins back out, purple lightning. That doesn't really hurt him, it seems. Just sh- push push back. shoots them back and they're like, oh! Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know, I know, I know, right? But they're really raising the stakes. Then we get the shot from the ground of just the purple lightning shooting off. And everybody's, and everybody's like, oh, no! Everybody's yeah, freaking yeah, yeah. out down there. Uh, but this is when Winston, you know, uh, Ray, if someone asks if you're a god, you say, say yes! yes. <laughs> uh, Bankman, this chick is toast! So they get up they there. Dubbed her, they dubbed her in this, right, too, right? Because, I mean, obviously... But I, I think that was the thing where she had such a thick accent. The actress they they chose that they had to like overdub her with someone else's voice. I would believe it, but I'm on. I don't have. I don't have a memory bank on that one. Yeah, Didn't she was like Tim. A, Tim you, say was the director. No, that was no, no, that's cool. she, oh, yeah. that was right. Sigourney right, Weaver's right. voice. Yeah, I yeah, forget yeah. who did Gozer's voice. Hold on, I have it, was, it. I have it. I see Lana there. Joven was the actor, but I don't know. I think she was like. I think she spoke with too much of an accent. Gotcha. But I could be wrong. While Tim looks it up, he's closing in on it. Tim is on the hunt. It's just fucking up. My my keyboard battery just yeah, died. They go over there and they they go to blaster right like they and they do the whole thing. Make them hard, ready, smoking all that shit. Let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. Uh, they shoot. She does a crazy little jump over there, lands on the thing. <laughs> Nimble little minx, isn't she? Yeah, <laughs> great line. That probably got me the most. <laughs> uh, they shoot. She disappears, and they're like total protonic reversal it's miller time and egon's like this is extraordinarily bad (laughs) and the whole thing starts shaking and shit starts falling and that's when we get the narration of goes and the goes alien go with the destructor and then it it, choose the form and perish and like choose we don't understand choose the form oh i get it i get it uh you know they're saying she's saying you know if we think of jager hoover jager hoover is going to show up and destroy us so just clear your minds don't think of anything and if you stop for a second to analyze it would be all right j edgar hoover is going to show up to destroy you right you exactly. just thought about it there's not like an unspoken contract with gozer but yeah. they all clear their minds of course except ray but we don't know that until they get the funny i'm not thinking anything my mind's completely blank did you think of anything and then they all slowly look at ray watching ray in this whole scene is so good yeah because like early on like it was right after he talks about j edgar hoover you see ray go like oh fuck oh fuck like i'm Man. definitely thinking about something right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> And so it's, yeah, yeah, I try to think of the one thing that could never hurt me. We used to roast. So we, look, and the, I love the Ghostbusters reactions as Ray continues to talk about it. We used to roast some tape of marshmallows at uh, Camp Wakanda. And Can I, you it, imagine, though, being in the audience, a fully formed adult watching this and being like, what is that? <laughs> like, I don't know what the hell this thing is. Well, and I, mean, I have I, no I, reference for it. I, I, for me, it's. I think you get enough of it. Of like, it's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and he talks about roasting him at the campfire. You're like, oh, it's some marshmallow man. Fine. I think it's more on like your second viewing. We're like, oh fuck, those are the marshmallows on our thing. Or oh fuck, there's a a poster when the ghosts are coming out. There's a fucking Stay Puft Marshmallow Man uh, logo over there. Is is the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man a thing now? Like, no. can we already went? Over I mean, for there. Ghostbusters. No, 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 no. I'm saying in the like. Did they ever no. make a brand out of it? Really? No, I don't believe they did. They didn't make a brand out of it, but you can now, in for Afterlife, go out and buy if, in certain shops. You know, uh, uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow. But that's like a missed opportunity, Kevin. Movie, that's right? that's why. Like, there you was are, wild. Yeah. So that's the thing, though. Is like, what were the marshmallows that were popular when we all grew up? Because I could have swore it was something like that. I'm mm-hmm. I'll figure it out. Jet, puffed. Don't worry, jet, I'm jet puffed is what you're thinking of. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I was like, Stay Puffed. I'm like, wait, no, fuck, that's not right. I can't. Uh, I can't believe that. Like. They didn't license the write out because it's like Stay Puff. Like, I've always thought that was a thing. Like, I understand that it wasn't. But then I certainly thought that once it was like this movie happened, that some company was like, yeah, we'll, we'll buy it, all of it. They, I mean, they did. No. At, at one point, Pear gave me as a gift some Stay Puff uh, caffeine laced marshmallows. I forget. But, you know, it's an IP deal, but there was never like a standing for years you could go buy Stay Puff. Yeah, see, I just always assumed they made it up because they didn't want to clear a brand and they made it the character. Because I remember Jet Puff. I'm looking at Crap Nowadays, Jet Puff right now. Like, Those now and I mean, like, I mean, um, sure. you, you already see, like, obviously, there, you can go buy Stay Puff in certain places. I digress. Yeah, Anyways. I, this is just tangentially related to this, but the design, they were like, yeah, it's Michelin Man and the. Uh, uh, Pillsbury Doughboy. That's fucking Bang hilarious. In. That is bang on perfect. Uh, so it's Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. He's walking down the street, right? Again, more funny lines here uh, talking about it. And uh, I, I love the Egon one. Egon, what do you got for me? Sorry, make one. I'm too terrified beyond the realm of rational thought. <laughs> terrified <laughs> beyond the realm of rational thought. But he says it again. You want to talk about the Egon way. character. Yeah. He says it so deadpit. I'm terrified yeah. beyond yeah. the capacity for rational thought. 
And so uh, he, you know, Save of Marshmallow Man approaches, eventually steps on a church. He's like, nobody steps on a church in my town. One, two, three, roast them. They blast him. He blows the fire back up. They run back. Um, you know, they sit there, and uh, there's a one throwaway line before we come back for the actual plan, but it's the um, – uh, funny us getting taken out like this by a hundred foot marshmallow man. And you know, and, and Bankman goes, you know what? We've got this all wrong. This, this Mr. Stay Puff, he's a sailor. He's, he's in New York. We get this guy late. We don't have a problem. <laughs> Let me go back to Stay Puff marshmallow man, burnt, you know, climbing the building in, in fucking pain and on fire. Uh, I, and this is where, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was looking for pictures of the set of uh, so the cool. Gozerian oh, yeah. like altar, but I found the Stay Puff man like set when he's walking through New York, and it's just really cool. I like it a lot. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. So wild to see this. And then we have another yeah, we one. Yeah, all that practical stuff, right? I know what they did. Yeah, it's well done. Him on fire. Um. Oh, so then after that, we come back, and it's Egon's got a plan. You know what I mean? There is cool one last picture. The That's Kevin's so cool. hat up. That is very damn cool, cool, man. Like the use of these like scale models and shit. It's just like dude, it doesn't feel this way when you watch the movie. Like no, no, no. That right. the sequence of him walking towards the camera fairly far away and seeing the cityscape all around it, I thought that looked fantastic. And so, uh, Egon says, you know, basically the door swings both ways. We could close it if we cross the streams. Cross the streams. You said crossing the stream was bad, Egon. You're going to endanger us and that you're going to endanger the lives of our client who paid us in advance before she became a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and Egon's like, there's definitely a very slim chance we'll survive. And another great uh, Bill Murray delivery of line of like, there's like every scene, like, this fucking sucks. And he's like, I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's go do it. <laughs> and uh, Winston gets that his de- job's definitely not worth 11 5 a year. So they run over there, um, and uh, another heartfelt line here, right? Five. Of like, uh, huh? eleven five. I know, right? Like yeah, nothing. Man. God. Well, I mean, the, but the the um, Ecto one was only what? What did they say? It was like twelve something, right? They said it was forty eight hundred dollars. Forty eight hundred. Oh, forty eight hundred. Yeah. You, you're right. You're right. I think you saw it in chat where they were like, yes, they were they, they converted it. Uh, so then we get over here and we get this heartfelt moment from Pete and Ray, right? Of see you on the other side, Ray. Nice work with you, Dr. Bankman. I get choked up saying it. <laughs> and, and like, you know, I mean, and, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know how much we ever talked about on podcast, but this is how deep our love of Ghostbusters goes is that at one point, Poe and I stopped talking to each other. We had a big fight. And in our final conversation, I we said this to each other. Where I was like, see you on the other side, Ray. And he goes, pleasure work with you, Dr. Bankman. And we just hung up and never talked to each other. Fucking for, nerds. You fucking losers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? uh, anyways, though, they cross the streams. And then, every, you know, Winston and Egon come in. And they cross the streams into one giant, like, you know, fireball tornado thing that goes in there. Uh, Stay Puff in the background totally notices this is all fucked up. It's like, oh, like, it's all big or whatever. And then, yeah, they like, that's it. And, like, they run away. And then the door blows. And, like, poof, just this giant fucking explosion of everything everywhere. Right? And we see... Uh, stay puff get nuked and like all that stuff this is when we you know get the scene of chaos on the ground where yeah walter peck gets all the shaving cream dropped on him and again like william atherton i assume it's his real line, his real recording right of just the <laughs> like, his <laughs> angry scream as he gets destroyed by this shit is so fucking good um but then you know the sky's clear all the destruction's gone, and we get, you know, uh, Ray getting up covered in. Oh, we get shots around of all the destruction. We see the, you know, barbecue, the terror dogs or whatever. Uh, we see Ray get up covered in it. Winston's okay. They start calling out. They find Egon. I feel like the floor of a taxi cab. Uh, then, you know, Pete Venkman pops up totally, pretty much totally fine, not covered in marshmallow, right? Uh, for his big scene and the romantic scene here in this movie. Uh, and that's when they go over there. And they find, we get a, uh, the, the pan of the terror dog all fried. And, uh, you know, it smells like burnt dog dog hair <laughs> oh thank me oh make what i'm sorry i forgot and he's in you know uh bill murray walks out of frame and then mr sigourney weaver's hand comes out and starts breaking down the thing and then all the ghostbusters start working on it and smashing it through this like charcoal uh, uh terror dog uh while they're doing super that cool, you hear by the way. sorry it was super cool her hand popping yeah. out and yeah, all that like it. that's really really rad. so rad uh while that happens uh lewis tully also uh, wakes up and what who turned tully off the light guy. yeah check on that little guy uh so they run over there to help her uh he's not uh, even he, that small these assholes you know what i mean <laughs> i know dude, these fucking <laughs> tall pieces of shit uh vankman gets uh, uh 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 dana out of it right I and mean, she's kind of got memory loss of all of, what's going on where am i oh hi and she's like it's a very like you know she's excited to see him moment or whatever meanwhile we get the lewis side of it where they get him out and he he's, he comes down he's like superintendent's gonna be pissed who are you guys and, and ray covered in marshmallows just like we're the ghostbusters and he has that moment 
who does your taxes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great, like fuck, MVP of this movie. You know, what I mean? great. MVP 100%. of this movie is the one and only uh, Lewis Tully. And so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you've been part of the biggest uh, cross rip of since the Gusta Blast. Great, <laughs> cool. Great. We'd like to get a sample of your brain tissue. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we get the, uh, Ernie Hudson's line of "I love this town." Slap, and then we're into the you know montage. Here. Not a montage, but credits, I guess, or whatever. Hero credits of them coming down and coming out, right? And the Dana and Peter kissing for the first time. Uh, you know, Ray smoking a cigarette and just looking and giving a little wave. Uh, you know, Egon comes out, Andy Potts runs over to him, is so excited. And then I love I, the two of them, huh? by the way. Yeah, I know. Uh, Everyone did. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Potts and Egon, I'm like, this this I like how it, it it's just there. It's subtle. It's not necessarily yeah. like hitting you over the head, but every time they had chemistry together, I'm like, I feel it. No spoilers for the next movie. Oh, uh, it, it might not go the way you think it will. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, Lewis comes out and it's the same. Everybody's like fucking fawning all over the Ghostbusters and excited. And he comes out and he waves like, I was an eyewitness. Anybody want to interview me? <laughs> and then the Red Cross people get it. And it's a line that breaks my heart to this day. I want I want to go with them in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine like your chance to ride with the Ghostbusters in the Ecto-1 in this parade and like fucking dumbass Red Cross guy grabs you and pulls you aside? Fuck. I'd be so pissed. Uh, but then it's, you know, everybody shutting down. Uh, them uh, loading up the pack you know the credits are playing everything's great uh we get the again the doorman the the new york doorman not the la doorman uh shutting the thing he's all fucked up i appreciate he stayed on the job that whole time you got you got uh cops out there doing your thing there's one is they you know they redo the ecto-1 and drive away i and i haven't listened to the commentary in years or whatever there's one that i noticed last night that i've noticed before and forgot about but i don't there's like almost a, a near like not disaster but like one of the dudes has his microphone wire across the ecto-1 and like at the last second, like he yanks it. It does not seem staged. It seems like these two extras were like, oh, fuck. I have this, the, the cameras over there and the cords over there and the cars driving through us. What do we fucking do? Because he yanks it back real quick across the thing. They drive away. People give chase. Uh, and then we, as the audience, get the Ecto or uh, the Ecto one Slimer rushing away from the Ecto one at us. And then boom, that's Ghostbusters. Last fact I have here is that in the middle of the film's initial release, to keep interest going, Ivan Reitman ran a trailer that was basically the commercial that the Ghostbusters used in the movie, but the 555 number was replaced with a 1-800 number, uh, allowing people to call in. Callers got a recorded message of Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd saying something to the effect of, hi, we're out catching ghosts right now. They got 1,000 calls per hour, 24 hours a day for six weeks. Jesus. That's cool as hell. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. You don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Why are you rhyming? Haiku in review. Who are you? Why are you rhyming? You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your reviews in haiku form. And since we're pre-recording this, nobody wrote in a haiku review. So all you Patreon people watching live right now, I need you guys to write your haikus for Ghostbusters 2 uh, for us to be able to do. And we're going to appreciate that very, very much. So thank you for all of your support. So now let's get to a little thing I like to call Ragu Bag. Ragu. Ragu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Slime Guys. This is where we rank all the villains and ghosts of the Ghostbusters cinematic universe. For Ghostbusters 1, who are we defining? Gozer the Gozerian. I would say Gozer and William Atherton's character, right? He's really the antagonist okay. of this movie. Mm. Gozer is just kind of in there, kind of like, well, what sets it all off. I'm coming out. Yeah. That's a great one. That is a good one. Yeah. And obviously, they get number yeah. one. But okay. I think even if they, they had competition, uh, big fan. You know what I mean? I think Gozer is a cool villain in terms of what we're talking about, or what you mentioned, Tim, right? Of like, it goes from zero to 60 all of a sudden of like, here's all this lore about this thing that's actually going to, you know, why was this happening? What was going on? Maybe you weren't paying attention to it, but now it's a thing. And of course, a formidable, formidable foe, right? Like, mm -hmm. Gozer comes out, their weapons have no effect, brings about Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, kind of fucks off after that. I kind of could have done something that was a little mm -hmm. bit more like, I'm still going to try to stop you. I see you doing, getting ready to cross the streams. I feel like was, I could have done something. Was that not Gozer turning into Stay Puff? Because isn't he the destroyer? You're right. Goes the destroyer. Yeah, yeah. Destroyer. Yeah. Form the destroyer. Well, we're the thing learning. Thing is always the today. fact that Stay Puff is so chill for the most part. Yeah. You know also what I mean? Very creepy. Just Puff seems kind of like a, a wild creature thrown into this area that doesn't really <laughs> want I mean, to fuck stuff up. It's just it, it, but like, let's let's just for a moment think about it. Like, 
the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, not a being that looks like is quick or that can do a lot of destruction other than stepping on things, right? Sure. Yeah. You figure, so, though, pretty good, I've, pick. pretty good pull if that's who's going to be, right? Yeah, not bad, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah not bad at all. That. Manifestation of the apocalyptic Sumerian deity Gozer. Yeah, you, 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 you go. burn that thing down, put it some hot chocolate. You got a good night right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never thought about it. You're right, Kev, yeah. I, 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 I guess I've never thought about what Gozer does until this moment. So, yeah, good call. Mm, good call. Mm, mm. Wow, there you're, we teaching, go. you're teaching Greg stuff, Kevin. Ragu bagu. Doing it together. I, what, what throws it off for me, of course, is, you know, in the, in the real Ghostbusters, of course, so Stay Puft has his own, like, you know, consciousness. It's not that he is Gozer, you know. Yeah, that show's not canon, though. Isn't it? Because I mean, like, there's the whole thing. Remember when they come up with the People Busters, where they have the whole aftermath, which I always thought was the coolest fucking thing of all time. Where after Real Ghostbusters was established, they do do an episode that's a flashback. Do, do. They do. <laughs> after after they beat Gozer, they come home in their jumpsuits and throw them uh, throw them out, or you know, Pete doesn't put them away, and that's actually what there's a bunch of energy to them that actually ma makes the People Busters happen. But that's when they get their new suits, but the firehouse is destroyed, and you're like, holy shit, this episode is a sequel to Ghostbusters. That's awesome. This guy's keeps saying. Uh, the people busters like we're supposed to know what the hell yeah, what that the is, fuck is a people buster? what's a people well, buster remember, we're doing all the films but we're also doing every episode of real ghostbusters so oh, we are not no we are, <laughs> we are not uh we are of course going to rank the ghostbusters movies clearly this is number one and i think it's a well-deserved number one so far i was very surprised by how much i enjoyed this film and i'm re really interested in the sequel i don't think i've ever seen it um definitely don't remember it Rapping. so uh, i'm excited because you guys are making me think weird things about it so next week uh we will return with ghost busters 2 thank you all so very very much for hanging out for this extra long version of in review because that's how we do here when we care about things and we're passionate like greg miller is about the ghost busters three hours two, uh, two hours and 30 minutes huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Love you all. I basically did a live reading of the script. Yeah. 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 It was it was so funny how much like I felt that Greg was very pressured to like nail every joke, which is every line. So <laughs> oh, yeah. good job, he did Greg. It. You did it. You know, oftentimes people are like, oh, I know this movie so well, I can like read it line by line. Greg Miller just proved he can do he that can, for yeah. Ghostbusters. So I, I was gonna be it, you know, like Greg Miller. <laughs> You know, Rahul and uh, and, uh, and uh, Bruce did that thing, right, where they got drunk and did Star Wars, and I was like, I didn't watch it. Like, I knew about it, and I appreciate them, and I love them, but, like, was it really they couldn't get one word wrong in the, like, the line reads? Yeah, I mean, the, the, it was more of the line. It was more of, like, what comes next, right? So okay. I, I think that's what would do it. But I really kind of at one point wanted to be the narrator and be like, Ackroyd answers the scene, looks up, and looks at so, and then like Greg Light then cigarette. says, the I almost busted out making Ghostbusters because there's a whole thing too of the subplot of like the car was originally going to be kind of supernatural too. There was a scene they filmed but didn't do where, uh, it, 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 the Ecto one gets a parking ticket from a cop, and like one of the things comes, like, it, no, there's nobody in the car, it, like, spins over and goes down and like zaps the ticket away. Wow, they got rid wow. of it. Wow, well. We'll return next week with Ghostbusters 2. Does Greg know it as well as he knows this one? We'll have to wait and find out. Uh, before so we go, real quick question for Greg. Uh, the stuff on top of the Ecto-1, like, do we ever get a use for any of that stuff? In the movies, no, but Dan Aykroyd can explain each and everything to you and what it means. And I, Again, I can show you making Ghostbusters, and it has breakdowns of what it all does. That's pretty I love cool. It. And it's actually, it. I have a book here. Let me get my books, because I have a book here, too, that's like the guide to the Ecto-1. It would have it all for you, too. <laughs> We'll look into it. Let's talk about that next week at the Ghostbusters 2 interview. Until Just then, cut the video. Cut the fucking video, please. Just cut the goddamn video. <laughs>